Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I acknowledge the presence of the following resource persons. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Deputy Governor for Monetary and Economic Sector, Mr. Francisco G. Daquila Jr. And Attorney Leila Magda G. Rivera, Managing Director, Comptrollership Subsector, Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Deputy General Counsel, Office of the General Counsel and Legal Services of, of Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Attorney Asma A. Panda. Their technical support team, Ms. Mary Ann L. Cube, Ms. Charity S. Malto, Attorney Maria Cristina E. Villaroya Moreno, Attorney Katrina Ann Libonhay Aldon, and Ms. Sarah Amabel Emilia. From the DOF, we have Assistant Secretary Euphrosinio M. Bernabe Jr., Office of the Chief Economist, Mr. Duke Katoko from Office of the Chief Economist of DOF, Ms. Eileen Eligen Saez, Office of the Chief Economist, DOF, Ms. Sara Conche, Ms. Klein Avelino, and Mr. Mike Saulo. From the Land Bank of the Philippines, President Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Cecilia C. Borromeo, Senior Vice President, Mr. Elcid C. Pangilinan, Senior Vice President, Mr. Gonzalo Benjamin A. Bongolan. From the NEDA, we have Ms. Irene Kuya and Undersecretary Kristalin Tan Uy. From the Development Bank of the Philippines, President and CEO, Mr. Michael O. De Jesus, together with Mr. Rodrigo Jesus V. Mantaring, Vice President, Ms. Maria Luisa Aguirre Pangilinan, Senior Assistant Vice President. From the Bureau of Treasury, we have our National Treasurer, Ms. Rosalia V. De Leon, together with Deputy Treasurer Eduardo Anto Anthony Marino, Director Kenneth Ian Francisco, and Mr. Lance Lim. From the Department of Badge Budget and Management, we have Undersecretary Leo Angelo M. Larsha and Undersecretary Joselito Basilio. Attorney Christine P. Altares, Ms. Alondra Shaira Sardenia, Ms. Ariel Fajardo, Mr. Christian Andal, Mr. Alexis Red Luis Iraga, Deputy Executive Director Maria Dionesia Dionisha Guillermo, and virtually attending Attorney Vixon Mabanglo. From the Govern Governance Commission for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporations, GCG, we have the Chairperson, Justice Alex L. Quiros, together with Commissioner Attorney Gideon D.V. Mortel, Jason L. Cecilio, Attorney Ruth Gal Galil R. Miasco, Attorney Juliet Marie M. Guevara, Ina Marie Feliz C. Protasio Ladislao, Delia Tabionag, Jennifer B. Copag, Hernani S. De La Cruz, and Ramonchita G. Laraño. From the Go Office of the Government Corporate Council, we have the Go our Government Corporate Council, Attorney Rogelio Quevedo, Together with him are Melissa Montesilio Acorda, Bernadette Faustine Balao, Alika Tinao, Princess Fatima Pariha, Par Parahiman. From the NEDA, we also have Undersecretary Rosemary Edelion. From the Commission on Audit, virtually attending are Ms. Adela L. Dondonilla, Attorney Fabian K. De Los Santos III, Ms. Marie Frances Hazel S. Acevedo, and Ms. Singson. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Attorney Ferdino Logi Santiago from the Office of the General Counsel. From the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, PAGCOR, we have Assistant Vice President Attorney Arnold Ferdinand Salvosa, Senior Manager Mr. Jesus Israel Javier, 
Supporting him are Miss Maria Laarni Orbeta and Mr. Darren Agaton. From the Public-Private Partnership Center, we have Executive Director Miss Maria Cynthia C. Hernandez and Jeffrey Mando. From the Government Procurement Policy Board, DSO, we have Ariel E. De Los Angeles. From the private sector, Your Honor, we have Mr. Antonio C. Moncupa Jr., President of the Bankers Association of the Philippines. Together with him is his managing director, Mr. Benjamin P. Castillo. From the F Federation of Economic Freedom, we have their president, Mr. Calixto Chiquiamco. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, this please allow us to state specific house rules to ensure the orderly and efficient conduct of this morning's hearing. The committee secretary shall inform today's attendees of our house rules. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Kindly mute your microphone if you are not recognized or do not wish to be recognized. Since the visual of the online meeting are limited, please inform the chairperson of your inquiry by specifying your name before stating your concern, comment, or position. All data that the resource persons wish to present relative to the subject today may be submitted to the committee secretariat for consideration of this body. One representative per office or organization may be allowed to speak for their respective organizations. Let me thank you for attending this committee hearing and assisting us in understanding the topics to be discussed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is our second hearing concerning the Maharlika Investment Fund Bills. House Bill number 6608, an act establishing the Maharlika Investment Fund, providing for the management, investment, and use of the proceeds, uh, use of the proceeds of the fund and appropriating funds thereof by representatives from Waldes, Delipe, Kimbo, et al. And Senate Bill number 1670, an act establishing the Maharlika Investment Fund, providing for the management, investment, and use of the proceeds of the fund and for other purposes by Senator Mark Villar. We had our first public hearing last Feb 1, February 1, 2023. We would, like to, we would likewise add to our agenda uh, Senate Bill number 1814, an act establishing the Maharlika Investment Fund, providing for the management, investment, and use of the proceeds of the fund, and for other purposes, by Senator Rafi Tulfo. Senate Bill number 1814 was referred to the committee last February 1, 2023, during the 3 p.m. session, and after we suspended our first public hearing at 1.39 p.m. During our last meeting, we discussed the objective, purpose, necessity, and benefits of the Maharlika bills, as well as the management of the funds. I thank my colleagues for their diligent study and effort to enhance the bill by raising highly relevant and important questions, leaving the committee an opportunity to further refine the language of the bill. As of today, our resource persons, our resource speakers during the first public hearing have already submitted their respective position papers, electronic copies of which were sent to the senators. The committee also received data information and documents from the agencies as well as requested by our colleagues last hearing, electronic copies of which were also sent to the senators. We also clarified some points during the first hearing. It made clear it, it was made clear to us that the purpose of the uh, MIF is to widen the options available to the government. It will complement the usual modes of funding for infrastructure projects. Another is that the amount to be invested by the LBP and DBP is part of their investable funds. Thus, the contribution of the LBP and DBP are the, are the amount meant for the investment. All the investments of the bank, be it in equity or loans, are subject to, the, to due diligence. The Philippines may benefit from having its own sovereign wealth fund, especially with respect to boosting our long-term economic productivity. Having a sovereign wealth fund may also help advance our infrastructure development. In this second hearing, we will continue with our public discourse. We invited resource persons from the private sector who are willing and ready to share their expertise on the matter. Senator Antiveros requested through a motion last hearing to invite the Federation of e for Economic Freedom, Management Association of the Philippines, and the University of the Philippines School of Economics Alumni Association. Also invited today are the Ebon, the Ebon Foundation and the Freedom from Debt Coalition. To our honored resource persons, we would like to hear your presentation and your take on the matter before we open the floor to, for questions and clarifications. 
So um, before we proceed, may I ask other senators present if they have any opening statement? Uh, no, proceed. Mr. Chair, I don't have any uh, statement to make, but I have some few questions later. Thank you. We now proceed uh, with the discussion. Again, in the interest of time and with the permission of my colleagues, we shall finish the presentation first. Uh, we shall uh, endeavor to finish the presentation first before we ask our questions or seek clarifications. So at this point, we would like to request our resource persons to deliver the presentation on the subject matter, which should not exceed 10 minutes. I was informed by the committee secretary that there will be one presentation from the group of the Federation for Economic Freedom. Uh, Management Association of the Philippines and the University of the School University of the Philippines School of Economics Alumni Association, which will be presented by Mr. Calixto Chikiamco. We will now give our colleagues uh, at this point. We'd like to recognize uh, the research person's presentations. So, what's the first? So, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Chikiamco, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, manifest uh, that uh, one of our fellows, uh, former Deputy Governor uh, Diwa Ginugundo, has sent a letter to the committee uh, in which we will be distributing. Uh, uh, he's in London right now, so he, he cannot uh, join us, but uh, he's sending his, uh, a letter to the committee. So uh, maybe uh, we will make a presentation on the eight. HBN 6088 and SBN 1670. Um, may I go to that? Uh, yeah, uh, this is our presentation outline. The funding source is problematic. Two, the confusion of objectives. Three, the question of level playing field in the summary and conclusion. So first of all, we go to the funding source is problematic. Um, the, the capital contribution of a uh, uh, land bank is about 25% of its capital and 33% of DBP. So it's a single uh, exposure of uh, DBP at land bank to a single investment. And I think it might even be breaching the potential regulations on a single investment. No. Um, next. Next. Well, uh, uh, hindi po malinaw doon sa bill ang investment ng land bank at DBP guaranteed po ng uh, national government. no? Uh, because uh, Section 11 talks about security or debt instruments issued by the MIC shall be guaranteed by the national government. So equity is a security. Hindi po malinaw kung guaranteed yon o hindi. Kung guaranteed po yun, can we move to the next slide? Kung guaranteed po yun, uh, ito po ang issues. Ano po yung guaranteed, no? Uh, well, the, the one before that. Uh, okay, I have the slide before that. What is guaranteed? Yung principal po ba? Yung income? Sa, sa securities po, walang uh, malinaw na may such thing as a guaranteed equity. No, um, so susunod. So, will other shareholders be disadvantaged versus DBP and land bank? Will the non-GFI debt holders see be junior and security to the equity holder? Again, hindi po malinaw yun sa bill. No, um, so susunod. The slide. So, assuming it's guaranteed, this creates a giant moral hazard. Ano po ibig sabihin ng giant moral hazard? when parties are protected from the consequences of their decisions. Uh, moral hazard creates incentive for the parties to be reckless, no? Kasi nga, they will not reap the consequences of their decisions. Land back, BBP will not do any more due diligence kasi guaranteed po ito ng, uh, uh, ng national government. Uh, merong consequences po, next slide, ang uh, ang uh, a pagka moral hazard yung ating 1997 financial crisis was when companies assumed central banks will protect the exchange rate 
and therefore borrowed heavily in dollars. Noong 2008, yung US financial crisis, ay nangyari po, big banks assumed they were too big to fail. Na, na sa-save sila ng gobyerno, and therefore they can take unnecessary risks. Susunod po. Susunod na slide. Susunod na slide. So, ah, uh, wait. If it is, if it is not guaranteed, it increases systemic risks to the banking system. Uh, the devaluation of the value of the MIF will translate to losses to the DBP and land bank. So, maari ito magkasunog sa buong financial system sa pagkat uh, exposed po ang DBP ang land bank sa MIF, no? So, pag mababa po ang value ng MIF, uh, ma-erode yung capital ng DBP land bank at maari mag-spread po yan, uh, contagion to the rest of the banking system. Uh, lalo na po uh, ito uh, the banking system and therefore they're subjected to all sorts of uh, uh, financial crisis and financial panic no um, next uh, other issues malaki po opportunity cost to the land bank in DBP sapagat the money that could have gone for example to the farmers loans by the land bank mapupunta po sa uh, Mahalika Investment Fund. Uh, pangalawa, yung regulatory relief to the GFIs will erode the moral standing of the BSP. Hindi na, ang BSP mawawala ng moral standing to impose very strict regulations to the private banking system when they allow uh, you know, regulations to be loose and to be uh, breached by the land bank and DBP. Susunod po. Uh, the SBS example degrades BSP as an institution. Una, it delays the increased capitalization of the BSP. Uh, the BSP's balance sheet, in fact, has been deteriorating. Uh, it's been weakening from a net worth of 145 billion in 2019 to about 85 billion in October 2022. That's the latest figures that we're able to get. Uh, we need a strong BSP in an era of economic and geopolitical uncertainty. Uh, hindi po natin alam, maaari magkaroon po na naman ng, uh, ng, uh, ng gera between NATO and, Ra NATO and Russia, magka-invasion sa Taiwan. A number of geopolitical uh, uncertainties loom over the horizon and kailangan po malakas ang ating Banko Central and therefore it needs the capital. Pangalawa, can we move to the next slide? It undermines BSP as an institution to maintain price and financial system stability. Sapagkat ang income objectives po ang magdominate ang BSP policy making because they'll be under pressure to make income, make uh, uh, net income that will be declared as uh, dividends to the uh, MIF. Perpetually, no? Uh, however, the BSP sometimes loses money from trading operations, such as protecting the price of law appreciation too much. Uh, nangyari po to noong 2012, nung nadugi po ang BSP, trying to protect the peso from breaching 50 to 1. I think mga 70 billion na wala sa kanila noon. Uh, borrowing to sterilize excess liquidity, reducing reserve requirements, etc. But it may desist from this operations as it pursues higher net incomes to be declared as dividends. So, susunod po. Uh, so, po the, the, the NG guarantee of MIF debt from GFIs will produce enormous scale and other risks. Uh, it will increase NGs, the national government's contingent liability. Uh, um, wala pong limit sa pag-i-issue uh, ng debt ng uh, mga land bank at DP, mga G GFIs at papautangin ang, uh, ang uh, MIF with a national government guarantee. 
It may lead to a, this in fact may lead to a lay, ratings downgrade, increase the cost of borrowings for the government. So instead of increasing uh, the funds available to government, among yare yung kapalitaran, uh, which is it may lead to increased borrowing costs for the government. And instead of increased funds for governments, increased borrowing costs will widen the fiscal deficit. Next. The MIF will likely produce intergenerational debt rather than intergenerational wealth. Next. Mayroon pa rin confusion of objectives. Uh, kailangan ho natin malaman, will the MIF seek developmental or optimized returns? Uh, will it look well for into consideration when investing or just seek to optimize returns as an investment fund? For example po, we seek the highest possible all rate to maximize return and or does it seek to get the lowest possible toll for the benefit of toll users and commuters? Hindi po malilaw yan sa bill. Ano ang magiging primary objective noong MIF? No? So magkakaroon po nitong conflicting objectives dito. Next. Uh, mayroon ito pong question ng level playing field. The MIF will have all sorts of tax-free privileges. Will there be a level playing field in the competition for projects? Also, as a government institution, it holds privileged information. So won't it have unfair advantages over the others? So competition po ng projects. If foreigners co-invest, co would they also be privileged with information that the detriment of other competitors in the private sector, say in PPP projects? So, dapat meron uh, um, level playing field, no? Next. Next. An uneven, an uneven playing field will dampen rather to improve the investment climate. So instead of marami pong investments ang papasok, eh, mas maaring madeter po yung mga legitimate investors pag nakikita nila na hindi po level yung playing field. Next. Ito po ang summary and conclusion. We do not object to the creation of a development financial institution. Sa palagay po nga namin, Maaring kailangan nga ito, kamukha nung ginawa ng National Development Corporation, sila po ang responsible for our banana and pineapple industries. No? Maaring kailangan rin ng isang development financial institution, for example, in consolidating farmlands, uh, um, putting up industrial tree plantations, and other uh, projects. Monet. Uh, the BSP and GFI should be removed as funding sources. Pangalawa, the primary objective of the MIF should be clarified. Conflicts of interest should not arise. And uh, pangatlo and last, the level, level playing field should not be tilted in, in favor of the MIF. Yun po lang. Maraming pong salamat. Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, presentation. And I'd like to uh, recognize, of course, uh, Senator uh, Senator Pimentel, Senator Coco Pimentel. Uh, and, of, and online, we have Senator Nancy Binay. And... Oh, yeah. yeah, so uh, thank you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, just, just to help those online, because online ako when I, yes, sir. I, I was coming here, yeah. we could barely hear the proceedings. So can... Can please, I, uh, can, can I the tech people? Yes, can the secretary please uh, resolve? Can you check this, please, and see if we can uh, resolve these issues on the uh, the volume? So at this point, I just have a few questions, and of course, uh, we will uh, open the floor to other uh, to our other colleagues. Uh, I just have some uh, regard with regards to your conclusions, and I think you you make some very valid points, sir. Uh, so assuming you were suggesting the BSP and GFI should be removed as uh, fund sources, so are, are we suggest are you suggesting that it 
could be completely private from private sources that the government should not put in any capital in this uh, Maharlik? Or what are your suggestions, sir? I'd I also like to hear your suggestions. Well, uh, I think there might be other sources of funds for the government that we could initially uh, fund it. Uh, for example, privatization proceeds for say, uh, say mga yung munting lupa uh, property ng, uh, ng Bukor, I think. Uh, the Nayea tree, um, uh, even privatization of Pakor. I mean, marami po that, uh, na sources that uh, the government can tap to initially fund it and uh, at the same time uh, uh, attract. Uh, investments from the private sector and even from foreign sources uh, eventually. Uh, uh, in fact, magkakaroon po pa ng problema ng absorptive capacity, I think, in the first two to three years. Eh, kasi mag-ramp up pa yan, matagal pa, no? To build up its organization, etc. So it has time to raise the funds. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, there were some issues. Maybe we can ask uh, the uh, the economic team also. Uh, to comment, perhaps when you mentioned earlier on the opportunity costs, which we for the the funds might be diverted from loans from our farming sector. Maybe the LB, uh, the land bank can comment on that. Um, thank you, Senator Senator Villar, and uh, good morning to all the honorable senators. Uh, the 50 billion being contemplated as the uh, contribution of the land bank. Uh, to the Maharlika Investment Funds will be part of the investable funds of the bank, uh, meaning uh, our investable funds is net of the loans that we give to our customers, including the players in the agribusiness value chain and the small farmers, sir. So uh, right now, our loan uh, investable funds uh, amount to 1.3 trillion pesos. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, perhaps uh, there was also a, a something a comment made on the uh, BSP, the balance sheet deterioration. Uh, so perhaps uh, the BSP can also comment on this. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, Your Honors. Um, now, in, we know that in both the House and Senate bills, the BSPs declared dividends to the national government is one of the funding sources of the Maharlika Investment Fund. And it can also be noted that under RA7653, BSP is already mandated to remit a portion of its dividends to the national government. So that essentially, the dividends belong to the national government. And uh, we... Uh, uh, recognize that Congress maintains the supreme power of the purse and has inherent authority to appropriate any dividends accruing to the national government in a manner that it deems appropriate to support the government's economic goals. Um, now, because of that, actually, um, the fact that the dividends belong to the national government uh, means that it should not affect the BSP's independence and its capacity to deliver on its mandates of promoting uh, price stability, a strong financial system, and a safe and efficient payment system. Uh, on the comment um, on uh, the uh, BSP being uh, uh, constrained on uh, its... Uh, ability to uh, deliver its mandate because of a, uh, uh, it would uh, be maximizing uh, profits instead in order to uh, increase uh, its uh, uh, dividend uh, contribution. Actually, uh, there is no uh, change in the mandate of the BSP being uh, uh, imposed by the uh, version of the bill. So again, uh, we do not see uh, we do not see the uh, these uh, provisions as impinging on the BSP's uh, ability to uh, achieve its mandate. The impact on the 
uh, of the provisions would be a slight delay in the completion of the BSP's capitalization build-up. Nevertheless, the BSP's balance sheet has improved and is strong. And um, a slight delay in the completion of our capitalization um, is... Uh, uh, is um, uh, not not really the, that uh, uh, it will not really hurt. Um, now uh, some uh, uh, numbers were cited in the uh, PowerPoint uh, that the net worth of the BSP has gone down from uh, I think the figure cited was uh, from 2019 from 145 billion pesos to uh, October of 2022 of 85.35 uh, billion. Actually, when we look at the uh, drivers behind the, the uh, change, uh, I look at the liability side uh, of the balance sheet. Um, in 2019, um, currency issued was about 1.679 trillion pesos, and uh, it jumped to 2.04 uh, trillion in 2020. That's a direct result of the pandemic because of the increased preference for cash. And then uh, it's um, uh, more or less maintained. So that by October of uh, 2022, currency issuance was at 2.084 trillion pesos. Uh, that that's a jump in the currency issuance. Uh, currency is treated as a liability of the BSP, but it's not really a liability that anyone is going to call. I mean, it's not uh, an indebtedness that you'll have to pay back. So. Uh, well, that increase alone is uh, uh, enough to account for the uh, decline in the net worth. Uh, again, uh, the other uh, major change in the uh, balance sheet, I'm looking at the liabilities portion of the balance sheet, um, deposits of the Bureau of the Treasury went up from 159.9 billion pesos in 2019 to 1.282 trillion pesos as of October of 2022. And these are the proceeds from uh, borrowings of the national government. So should the national government begin to withdraw uh, these uh, borrowings, then there would be an equivalent decline in our international reserves. But then there's a one-for-one -one change in both the assets and the liabilities. So again, it will not be something that will impact on the net worth. So I think those, uh, those uh, uh, trends explain the change in the net worth, and it doesn't really um, uh, mean that the BSP has become weaker as an institution or uh, less able to uh, do uh, the necessary operations to be able to achieve uh, its uh, uh, mandate. Thank you, Your Honours. Thank you, uh, the Deputy Governor Francisco Dakila Jr. from the BSP. And uh, earlier, prior to him, we, we heard from our Land Bank uh, President, Ma'am Cecilia Borromeo, uh, just a few more uh, questions, and then we'll proceed with uh, the order. Of, uh, the order after this will be Senator Gachalian, followed by Senator Tulfo, followed by Senator Binay, and Senator Pimentel. Uh, regarding uh, your your point regarding the moral hazard was uh, well taken. Uh, you understand? I mean, obviously the concept is uh, it's a economic. Well, just for the viewers, it's an economic concept wherein if the, if there is a guarantee, then it gives the um, the institution, uh, a, I guess, uh, it almost it creates a situation where there is very little downside to making risky investments. That's basically the uh, concept of uh, moral hazard, which was uh, something that came up during the uh, 
bailouts done in 2008. So that was, uh, I see your, uh, your point is well taken. And I, I understand you are not, uh, of course, the guarantees. Now, when you say you're, you're against the guarantees, do you mean, for instance, I think, and I think this is something that should be clarified. Is it the guarantee? Would you be, because there, there are some groups who would like the investment, not 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 necessarily the uh, the the returns, but at the very least the principle of their in, of the government uh, GFI's investment in the Maharlika to be guaranteed. Is that even that you you your group is opposed to that? Yes, uh, uh, we, we're 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 opposed to the guarantee even of the the principle because uh, again. Uh, uh again it's part of the moral hazard no, i mean uh it will not that means that they could just not do any due diligence with respect to the investment no uh and of course it increases the contingent liability of uh, the government uh yes thank you for that uh uh clarification uh and I think I think that's something even well to begin with. I think in the issuance of debt, it was we weren't it wasn't intended in the spirit of the bill to be um, to be part of the uh, the guarantee. It was more like the the amount that it was what we what we were the bill conceptualized was more of the amount invested by the the principal invested by the uh, the GFI would be guaranteed by the government. So, I mean, that's something I think that that's uh, it's good to that we discuss that issue. I think uh, you know, moral hazard is a very legitimate uh, uh, concept. So, thank you very much for that uh, clarification, and uh, and also the tax benefits. There is a provision there where, in lieu of taxes, uh, there would be a uh, a percentage of the fund to be given to. Uh, so certain um, certain uh, certain uh, public service um, projects. Uh, so you would rather that? Are you saying you would rather that there just be a it it not be it not be the the fund will not be exempt from any taxes the usual? That's your position. Well, we're just arguing that it has uh, that uh, it should have uh, the. It, the uh, the playing field should be level because right now I think under the bill it is exempt from all taxes. No, uh, therefore, um, how, therefore it will have an unfair advantage over other uh, companies that will uh, say uh, bid for if it's a PPP or infrastructure projects. No, uh, so that's that's the problem. That's the major problem that there will be a. Uh, 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 an even playing field. It's not so much as where the money will go, you know, uh, the dividends, no, but as to uh, in the competition for projects, it the playing field might be uneven. So I, I would, because uh, the, the original concept was that was was the the that allocation of uh, that income allocation was in lieu of taxes. They would give it to. I know, but uh, you're, I think as you're saying that, uh, are you are you more of the, I guess, are you more of the line of thinking that it should be just direct taxes? We don't have to allocate uh, a portion of the income. Instead of that, let's just give it to, let's just make it fair. I mean, in that respect. Because it, it, originally the concept was that was done in lieu of the taxes that were supposed to be paid. They would give it directly to these social civic projects. So, I mean, uh, based on your statement, can I derive from that that you are more of the mindset that they, they, they should just pay directly taxes instead of going and, ha and having that? Yes, I think uh, they should pay taxes the same as other private corporations if they're going to compete with the private sector for projects. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, and thank you for your the effort. Uh, this is the private sector. They did uh, representing the, the uh, several... Uh, uh, organizations who have uh, form who have created this uh, single presentation for the their comments on the Maharlika bill, and I thank you for that. Uh, at this point, we'd like I'd like to the the committee would like to recognize uh, Senator uh, Sherwin Gachalian. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first question is to uh, uh, Mr. Chichamko. Uh, of FEF. Uh, sir, I was looking at your presentation and I was also listening earlier. Um, 
And obviously, there's uh, some concern on how the uh, Maharlika Investment Fund will be structured no? and will be created. Uh, but a lot of this actually can be remedied through, uh, through law. No? Uh, we can correct that as we discuss the bill and as we uh, modify the bill. Like, for example, um, the uh, guarantees, assuming, uh, in, I, I think during the last hearing, no, um, it, it was also mentioned that uh, there is indeed a guarantee to the DBP and, and land bank. Uh, their um, uh, infusion, their capital infusion will be guaranteed. That was discussed during the last hearing. But we can remove that through law. No? So we can take that out. Um, in terms of um, uh, competitiveness, we can also remove by law the tax uh, uh, breaks and the tax um, exemptions given to the Maharlika Investment Fund. Uh, that should even out the playing field. No? Um, if we remove all of those uh, and make it a standalone fund, just like any other fund, no? an ETF or a mutual fund that will compete for investments, that will report through profits or through income, not, 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 uh, um, not uh, clouded with uh, tax incentives, uh, will this be palatable to uh, the private sector and to uh, the... Uh, uh, to experts like yourselves? Well, uh, if you remove the guarantee to the investment of DBP and Land Bank, uh, on the other hand, it will increase the systemic risks to the banking system. As uh, any failure or even uh, market, market volatility of the fund will translate to ch charges in the capital of DBP and Land Bank it will uh, become wobbly and the market will perceive that and it can create uh, contagion and uh, financial panic. Okay, so uh, in your opinion, the capital of fusion from the GFI might lead to a, uh, I think you call it lighting the fire in the banking industry. Yes. Assuming we find other sources, because uh, the chairman also requested that the DOF to submit to us some assets uh, that can be sold in the next few months and the proceeds from the assets can be infused to this. Assuming, assuming, you no, know, uh, we managed to find other sources. Uh, will this be palatable? Yes, as long as you remove the GFIs from the funding, as I said, we, feel, we also see a need for a development financial institution. Similar to, for example, what the National Development Corporation has done before, uh, because uh, it uh, leased lands uh, to uh, the pineapple and banana industries, and that's the reason why we have the banana and pineapple industries. There could be, for example, in consolidating farmlands, we need bigger and better managed farms now. So. I mean, there's a role for a development financial institution to do this, or in renewable energy projects. In fact, our vice chairman, uh, Romy Bernardo, uh, suggested an article to create a Maharlika Green Investment Fund, in which uh, you know international investors will, will very likely co-invest, because this will be uh, lead to mitigation of climate change. So uh, as long as the funding will not uh, it's increase the systemic risks to the banking system, I think uh, we can live with that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chikyamko. Um, I, I'll go to the land bank, no? and uh, I want to understand um, the, um, the, the source of the 50 billion. No? I understand that you, you mentioned, uh, Ma'am uh, Borromeo, that... Uh, uh, there is 1.5 trillion in investable funds. Is that correct? Uh, through the chairman, uh, yes, uh, Senator Gatjanian, the portf investment portfolio of Land Bank is 1.3 trillion. That is net of the loans that we've given to our priority sectors, including the agri sector. But unlucky, ho, no. Uh, I'm not happy to hear that uh, there is this much funds in a bank, no? uh, considering that the GFIs are geared towards 
uh, a specific mandate. No? Um, Land Bank for Agriculture, develop, DBP for uh, Developmental Projects. Uh, they're not commercial banks that the board has a discretion to uh, leave X amount. Uh, these banks were created for a specific reason. No? Uh, number for Land Bank is Agriculture. So I'm actually not uh, not impressed to hear you know, that there is 1.5 trillion lying around uh, not being lent to our agriculture sector. Uh, we all know that agriculture sector needs investment. Uh, what Mr. Chisamko mentioned earlier, consolidating land, uh, lending out to farmers, uh, modernizing needs a lot of capital. Bakat uh, ang How come there's 1.3 trillion lying around and not being plowed into our, to the agriculture sector? Uh, there are several factors that uh, can explain the balance sheet po of land bank. First, the the asset size of land bank is uh, mainly driven by deposits, most of which are short term. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we we manage those funds in a manner where we allocate a portion of it for long-term loans and also for working capital uh, requirements of eligible borrowers, sir. But uh, the 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 loans that we don't we get we don't lend yet because there is also. Uh, an issue about the absorptive capacity of some of the sectors that we prioritize, like the agri sector. Uh, we park those funds in government uh, bonds and treasury bills. Most of our investments, probably 90, 95% of our investments are in government uh, bonds and treasury bills. Uh, senator. So uh, while we are also working very hard and increasing the absorptive capacity of the agri sector, the reality, sir, is that uh, there are so many challenges and most of the players in the agribusiness value chain are actually not yet ready to uh, uh, be funded via credit. And that is why we see the Department of Agriculture also giving subsidies to this sector. But uh, let me just assure the the senators and the public that uh, the loan portfolio of land bank to the agri sector has been increasing more rapidly than the growth of the agri sector, sir. Uh, our loan portfolio to the agri sector uh, as of end of 2022 was 261 billion, sir, the highest probably in the industry. So this will be sourced from the park funds, no funds that are uh, yet seeking uh, um, yet seeking uh, loanable um, entities. Uh, how big is that that park fund? That's one. That's the one point three trillion. Tama po ba? Yes, sir. That's our investment portfolio. What, what is the composition of your investment portfolio? 95% of those investments are in government uh, treasury bills okay. and bonds. And the 5%? Uh, that would be in some equities. In the stock market? Yes, sir. All of that? Uh, no. Uh, it's a combination of also private, uh, I private issued bonds. The 5% is bonds. how much? Uh, that's about 600 billion 600 no 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 60 5 percent of 1.60 billion sir. 60 billion okay and the 50 billion that will be invested in the maharlika investment fund where will that come from the 95 or the five percent it can be a combination, sir. As, this, uh, as the investments will mature at the time that we will be mandated to uh, give the, our 50 billion uh, contribution to the fund, or we can also fund it uh, via additional uh, deposits. So we don't have uh, the we won't have to be pressured to uh, sell uh, our existing uh, portfolio. This 60 billion, how, how do you, what is the ratio between um, equities in the stock market and private companies? 
I would assume it, the, the, the equities in the stock market is bigger because of liquidity. Correct? You can sell it anytime. Our ceiling for equities is 50 billion, but we are not invested up to that ceiling, uh, Senator. Uh, let me just check. Uh, our I, just, I, I just want to know the, the how you manage your funds. No? So I just want to be enlightened how Land Bank manages uh 1.3 trillion in in investable funds uh, or, or park we call it park funds no so just want to understand that so that 60 billion which is the five percent how how is that what is the breakdown of that uh that we will have to check in equities yeah okay uh it's told by our senior vice president. Actually, we have about 20 billion or 16 billion in private equities. Some 60 billion in private equities. 16 billion 15. in private okay. equities. The others are the bonds issued by the private sector also, mostly the, the conglomerates. So when we manage our investable funds, uh, Senator, we do a... We, we look at the maturities to ensure uh, liquidity. When our depositors would like to get back their money, we ensure that we can we can service those withdrawals. So it, it's a balance of uh, the maturities of our various investments and also optimization of the returns on our investments. Thank you. I understand that, uh, uh, ma'am. The this this inequity. Uh, are these invested in blue chip companies? What, what's the comp what, what is the investment criteria? Yes, we do have uh, criteria on, on our investment. So we look at their uh, ratings uh, done by either the domestic rating companies or even the international rating companies. We conduct due diligence, a very thorough due diligence on the financials and even on the the management of these uh, companies. These are publicly listed, of course, and as you mentioned, most probably all of them are blue chip, considered blue chip companies. Um, from the ratio, no, I, I, this is my uh, my personal uh, take on this. From the ratio, uh, Land Bank is a super risk averse institution. No? Ninety five percent in government bonds and T bills. That's virtually. Uh, risk-free, no? uh, guaranteed by the state. 5% uh, in equities, uh, and the, the criteria is they should be blue-chip companies, I would assume, correct? Um, and earlier, I, I, I uh, heard that uh, the 50 billion, aside from the concern of Mr. Chikiamko on um, uh, the, the financial uh, contagion uh, possibility, no? Um, I heard earlier that the 50 billion will be taken out either from government equities, the 95%, or the 5%, no? um, or a combination. No? Um, if we remove, assuming the guarantee to land bank, no? and, and because that's also a concern of uh, some of the legislators, it's my personal concern as well, if we remove that, how will, you, how will you rate the Maharlika Investment Fund? Because 95% risk-free, 5% blue chip. Uh, Maharlika Investment Fund is a new fund. We take out the guarantee no? so that it will compete just like any other uh, mutual fund or ETF. How will you rate them? The investment in the fund, Maharlika Investment Fund, will be an investment to uh, an allied uh, undertaking. And uh, based on the BSP uh, regulations, uh, that will carry a 100% charge uh, on our capital, meaning that investment will have to be deducted from our capital when we uh, compute for our capital adequacy ratio, um, Senator. You need the higher capital capital adequacy ratio for this investment. No, no, let's take it one step long. First, how do you rate it? Do you rate it as a a a a, a, a class A investment, class B investment? No, because now you don't have choice because it's in the law. 
no yes. so you don't rate it at all that's where the moral hazards actually come in no uh you don't look at the ratings anymore because whether you like it or not, you have to plow in the 50 billion. That's where the FEF moral hazard comes in. Eh? Because so, but there's... independently, how do, you, how do you analyze this new fund? No? That, that... Uh, we will have to look at the business plan of the corporation where the funds will be invested because that's the way we do our due diligence. Uh, have you seen the business plan? Uh, of the corporation for not of yet, sir. Maharlika Investment Fund? No. None. So you haven't seen the business and plan, and so we don't have any rating and the uh, and the uh, and the investment because of uh, lack of uh, historical information. With the permission of uh, Senator Gutierrez, because he mentioned the business plan. Is there a business plan? No, walang wala si land bank, but may a uh, national treasure. You can uh, speak for the group. The economic Mr. Chair, uh, eventually, well, of course, uh, right now we're working on the legislation. Part of the legislation is that there would be an investment strategy and also a risk management strategy. But all the projects that would be uh, funded by the Maharlika Fund would be uh, approved by the NEDA. So NEDA has already a pipeline of all these projects that could be financed by the Maharlika. Uh, but Secretary De Leon, di ba, para mas, ano ba yan, mas convince kami to approve this bill kung alam na rin namin kung ano ba talaga yung business plan well uh ma'am in the legislation po we have also cited already the objectives which is the developmental and of course the commercial and then uh we are also working in terms of how much would be the returns that are also envisioned by the fund yeah so, but how can you envision a return when you don't mm -hmm. even know what's the specific developmental plan like offhand can you cite uh, one de developmental project na mukhang yun na yung first, ano nyo, first target nyo? Uh, Senator, uh, just for the information, uh, I mean, before the committee members, we, we asked for, from the Department of Finance, a specific list of projects that, uh, uh, that are, that could potentially, potentially uh, be, be, uh, uh, be part of the assets of the Maharlika Fund, big ticket projects, which we can furnish you, we have the copy here. So just for your information, uh, Senator, uh, of course, uh, I understand that, uh, of course, uh, until the actual fund, the management team is formed, the details would be I know, work, work to follow. But we do have, if you want to see, Senator, we can furnish you a copy of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Gachalan. Uh, yeah, that, that's another thing. No, I think it will give us a lot of comfort if we see where the fund will be invested. Uh, that's where the business plan is. And um, pursuing the questions to um, Ma'am uh, Borromeo, uh, I'm trying to address the moral hazards. Eh? No, because um, right now no choice so ang land bank. Eh? No, parang. Uh, you're mandated to put money there, no? But if I look at your, 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 um, the, the attitude of your board or the attitude of the bank towards investment is very risk averse. 95% no? in T bills. No? Uh, ako, I won't do that no? in my personal uh, activity because it's so risk averse. No? But that's a bank, no? that's the nature of the bank. Eh? And I will not debate you on, with you on that because. You have to protect the deposits of uh, the LGUs, the farmers, the corporations. That's the that's the uh, that's the attitude towards investment. Uh, in the five percent, which is considered uh, slightly risky, blue chip companies, pa. No? So meaning the the risk is minimized. No, so that's why I want to understand. If uh, land bank will be given, will not be mandated to invest here, how, what type of analysis will you do so that you'll be convinced that you'll be investing, you, you'll be convinced to invest in Maharlika? You look at the business plan, but there's no business plan. What else will you look at? The, the objectives of the Maharlika uh, Investment Corporation will, uh, will guide the bank uh, 
the senator. And uh, of course, uh, land bank is the biggest policy bank. So whatever is the the um, national social economic agenda of the government, we will support, sir. Uh, because also most of our uh, deposits, about 65% of our deposits are from government entities. Valenzuela so, is also included. We're, we're also a depositor of land bank. But I want to yes. see our deposits come back intact. No? Yes. So that I want to also understand that you're investing wisely in yes. all investments, not yes, only uh, in Maharlika Investment Bank, but to all. No, that's why I want to understand uh, how do you uh, how do you evaluate investments, and that that's where I'm driving at. Because from where I stand right now, uh, there's no details on how the fund will be invested in. Um, if this is if this is peddled to land bank, will you invest? Kung wala pong, kung wala po ito sa batas, will land bank uh, find this a wise investment? Uh, if it because uh, again we're putting this again going by the presentation of FEF, we want to make this uh, we want to even the playing field, correct? So, marami pong lalapit sa land bank na and uh, a portfolio mutual funds uh, uh, no, other other funds you'll be evaluating them Marlika will be one will this be an attractive investment for land bank considering that land bank is risk averse so given all the objectives of the fund which is for uh developmental projects uh we can allocate our part of our capital uh Total paid up now is 168 billion instead of the short term deposits to uh, fund our investment in the in the fund. Uh, so uh, the answer, sir, to your question, will we invest? Uh, yes, if it is part of the social economic agenda of the national yeah. government. But yes. if it's not part of the social economic agenda as a standalone investment fund, will you invest? Uh, <laughs> no, that's what I'm, 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 I mean, it, uh, they are, you're managing the money, the deposits of other investors. No, so yeah, so since there's no historical data that we can uh, base our decision whether to invest or not, uh, uh, the business plan of the corporation when uh when uh, formed or organized will be uh, our basis for investing. And uh, sir, our uh, return on equity, the return on equity of uh, the government in land bank was 14% uh, last year. So uh, if we were, we were to use our that metric, uh, we will have to see a projected return on our own equity in the corporate in the MIC uh, through the MIF uh, to be also uh, along that range sir about 14%. Uh, so, yes thank you can I just uh, interject uh, just a clarification about the uh, question of Senator Nancy uh, Senator Binay earlier uh, yes the document that we have is actually for ano pala, for uh, disposal uh, government assets for disposal uh, for which was requested in the last committee not not uh, possible PPP. So later on, after the line, maybe later on, uh, the the PPP center is here, and they can give information to Senator Binay about what potential projects uh, are are there for the Maharlika should it be uh, implemented. Uh, also, we, along these lines, also I think uh, it should be noted also that the uh, in the law, the uh, land bank and DBP are members of the board, so they do have a say on what the investments. I align with the Department of Finance Secretary. So, uh, in terms of what will be invested in these uh, uh, these uh, initial investors, uh, these uh, land bank will have a say on what the the Maharlika fund will be invested in. Just uh, thank you, M Mr. Chair. My point of the matter there is uh, the land bank is a bank. No, uh, they have the, the 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 park funds that. Uh, Ms. Borromeo mentioned earlier are deposits from LGUs, deposits from but from from the employees, uh, deposits from uh, ag-related companies, um, and these park funds 
are, are meant to be safeguarded uh, by making wise investments. No? Um, of course, uh, we understand that the uh, Land Bank is supportive of the developmental policies of government, but these are not excess funds. Eh? These are park funds because they're not loaned to loanable companies. No? Um, so my point there is um, it should the Maharlika Investment Fund should be evaluated just like any other uh, mutual funds, uh, portfolios that Land Bank is doing. No? And if the requirement is a 14% return, then the first thing to look at is whether the investment or the potential investment of Maharlika will yield to 14%. No? Um, that's where the moral hazard comes in. Eh? Parang no choice na kami, maglalagay na kami, bahala na, bahala na. Uh, Mr. Chair, kung kikita yan o hindi. No? So that's where the, the moral hazard. And, and I think, Mr. Chair, going to that, uh, the chairman requested um, the DOF to uh, share with us the, the business plan, no? the direction of Maharlika in terms of investments, uh, so that we will be comforted that there is indeed some form of uh, roadmap or some form of direction, some form of analysis on where the funds will be invested. No? I think it's also giving us comfort that there's a direction. Hindi lang we'll create the fund and bahala na, we will be invest the uh, amounts. No? So uh, we'll request again. Yeah. Yes, uh, regarding maybe the PPP can do some comments, but I would suggest also perhaps uh, for the uh, committee, they submit also potential uh, uh, some potential partnerships or, or uh, investment vehicles that the Maharlika Fund can possibly invest in in the future. But anyway, can we ask for the PPP to comment on the, the concerns of uh, Senator Gachalian and the rest of the committee? Um, okay, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman and the uh, members of the committee. Um, in terms of um, public-private partnerships, it's really... Um, the, the thrust, particularly the current economic team, is to make sure that um, development um, objectives are aligned across the, the, um, across the economic plan. So um, we recently um, released the Philippine Development Plan, and um, the NEDA is currently finalizing the Philippine Infrastructure Plan. And a subsector of that would be which projects would be implemented through public-private partnerships. And while currently, um, the, the way that PPPs are currently structured is that um, we structure it such that the private sector will do the financing of these projects. But I think eventually, when there is a Maharlika Investment Fund, we will certainly also um, need to do some policy initiatives to make sure that any um, government direct investments in these um, projects would also be able to uh, avail of the returns that the private sector um, partners would get from the PPP projects. With the permission of Senator Gachalande, what will you what will be your role sa Maharlika? Um, at, at the moment, hindi siya ganun ka clear. But let's say if um certain projects are um if let's say certain PPP projects will be looked at as uh, potential investments of the fund, um these PPP projects are. Um, those that have gone through vetting of the uh, ICC um, through the Technical Board, Cabinet Committee, and the NEDA Board. So this would meet um, the investment criteria also of the Philippine government. So just to be clear, because there are PPP, may private sector, uh, for example, NLEX, SLEX, that's your example of... Uh, PPP. But with the Maharlika Fund, paano ba yun? Si Maharlika Fund magjo-joint venture with government? Um, well, let's say we're, we, we, if we talk about a, a road project, di ba? So, kunwari po, meron, meron tayong city and we want to build a bypass road just to um, reduce congestion. Um, it could be a case that 
as part of our infrastructure objectives, gagawin natin yung bypass road without making it a PPP because we just want to improve the economy in the area. But let's say there, we see a business case. This could be a PPP and the private sector could undertake the role of financing it and operating it as a PPP project. So um, that's how we allocate so, projects. So saan ka sa story um, na yan, yung Harley ka fund? Actually, that, that could be, let's say, um, we could... It hasn't, it's not being done now because there's no Maharlika Fund. But let's say we could um, conceptually um, bid it such that um, we can say the Maharlika Fund um, has a participation in, in the project, let's say, as an equity provider. So it's already, let's say, built in. Um, we can say that... Um, Maharlika Fund is a 20% participation. So, so it, it could be um, conceptually done that way. So, Chairman, siguro for submission na lang sa PPP, yung mga, yung mga ganong uh, conceptually uh, possible with the Maharlika Fund. Yes, yeah, so please, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, address the request of uh, Senator Binay and have a, I think that's a very good point that we should uh, already as early as now identify these projects so so there's the comfort level increases in especially with the legislators and they know that there are really outlets for the funding and w what quality these outlets are so uh, Senator do you uh, but, uh, just to terminate Mr. Chair and I'll go to, uh, I'll just ask my other questions during the second round uh, just to follow up the request you requested this last time from the DOF on the potential investments uh, what type of returns are we looking at what types of cash flows what type of horizons are we looking at now we'll, we'll just await uh, uh, for that submission Mr. Chair uh, thank you Senator and we will remind we'll follow up uh, these submissions and uh, at this point, we'd like to recognize Senator Rafi Tulfo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I really appreciate the concerns uh, raised by Mr. Calixto Chikyamko. Thank you, sir. And uh, and I have some few questions for you. Tama po kayo. We're talking of uh, people's money here, so we should really be very, be very, very careful doing some investment that we will be making. My question to you, sir. What do you think kung lagyan po natin ng put option contract yung investment? Lahat ng i-invest na pera ng Maharlika in any corporation dapat merong put option contract. Meaning, um, kapag halimbawa yung stocks ng isang corporation where the money, where the funds were invested in a certain corporation ay uh, bumag bumagsak. So, uh, Maharlika has the right to sell back the uh, investment at a predetermined price or let's say uh, the same price the yung 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 pa rin yung premium kung pa kung magkano yung uh, in invest niya plus 30% para uh, okay. may sure po yung yung investment no well, uh, i don't think in all projects you can find somebody who will put a put option Secondly, depende po yung kung sino yung counterparty, kung sino po yung nagpuput. Kung he has, the, uh, he has the financial capacity to make good on the put option. Kaya nga po, uh, mag-invest lang yung Maharlika doon sa mga company na kaya nilang panindigan o, uh, or papayag sila because they have the capability uh, when the time comes uh, para uh, to make good on that put option contract. Uh, kung merong mga kumpanyang uh, na nga noon na mag... Uh, it will maybe save the, uh, the principal, but it's not without risk. Again, depending nga uh, sa, sa korporasyon na nagpuput that will back up the put option, no? Okay. So, so you said it depends on the company na papayag o babakapan yung put option. Kaya sabi ko kanina, and then we should be very selective and choosy uh, uh, in... Uh, uh, approaching uh, the uh, corporation that uh, we would invest our money in. Pero sa pagkaalam ko po, 
uh, invest nila sa projects. Eh. Sinasabi nila, based on the newspaper, sa mga PPP projects, sa infrastructure, etc. Sino mag-put up ng put option doon sa mga noon na projects? Okay. Um, and then another thing na pa uh, hindi po papasukan ng korupsyon, ito pong uh, Maharlika, my suggestion is um, we should not exempt the members of the board from uh, criminal uh, prosecution, uh, especially kung meron pong nangyari mga bad investments uh, due to uh, selfish practices, uh, pwede silang dapat kasuhan ng plunder. What do you think of that, sir? Well, we have no objection to that. Uh, it, uh, uh, it makes it one step toward ensuring that the interests of the board are aligned with that of the corporation if they know that there are consequences to their action. No? Uh, but our main point po is really the funding. Eh. Hindi po yung sa investment side. No? Uh, maaari magkaroon po ng uh, ipang mga... Um, uh, mga assurances that they, this will not be subject to corruption, including mga good governance, audit, etc. Uh, pero uh, ang main point po namin yung sa funding kasi mas, mas malaki because of the, the increase in the systemic risk to the banking system. Masusunog po yung ating banking system pag ito ay at the present form uh, this how it is structured. Um, briefly, uh, I'll talk about funding, uh, kung saan pwede mag-source out pa ng pera uh, para ma-invest ng Marlika. Um, sa ngayon po kasi yung version ng house, it says that 10% uh, uh, will come from, uh, yung 10% ata ita tax from uh, PAGCOR, uh, tama? PAGCOR revenue, after the creation of Marlika. So my suggestion is why not uh, before and after. So yung present na uh, mga gaming uh, should also contribute 10% of their income to the Maharlika. Not only after. Kasi kung after, so ibig sabihin, kailangan pa natin mag-create na marami pang sugal para makahabol, para makaambag na maraming pera doon sa Maharlika. So it should start right off. Lahat ng mga gaming should also contribute and after the creation as well. But why not privatize PAGCOR? You can get 100 billion or may, maybe more. You know? yes. uh, and then the government just sticks to regulation. It doesn't have to do the operations. You know? So that's one source of, uh, of revenue. And even as I said, uh, assets like Muntinglupa, the jail, you know, maybe it will get you 100 billion or something. Okay, Mr. Chair, kasi kaya tinatanong ko si Mr. Chikyamko kasi ngayon pinag-aralan ko pa rin po kung uh, ano ba talaga magiging stand ko sa Maharlika Fund. Uh, kung ito ba'y makabuti sa taong bayan at kapag nakita ko na hindi, then I will not vote for it. For now, I'm in consultation with some uh, economic experts and uh, mga taong gusto kong malaman ang uh, kanilang opinion tulad ng opinion ni Mr. Chikyamko which I really appreciate. Thank you, Mr. Chikyamko, sir. Uh, if I make another point, uh, sinabi po ni uh, Ms. Borromeo dito that may problema na absorptive capacity ang agricultural sector, sa loans. So isang uh, maaring gawin ng isang development financial institution really is it to go into agriculture, do farmland consolidation, agricultural estates, etc. na, na pwede nang pautangin doon. No? So, or, or for example, like yung industrial tree plantations, no? or yung mga, uh, sa ngayon, wala po mapasok doon. Kasi may problema po sa ating konstitusyon na 25 years lang for exploitation of natural resources and another 25. Eh, ang isang puno po, it takes about 10 to 20 years to grow. By the time it is finished, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, your, your, your uh, license will be up, hindi ba? Pero kung ang gobyerno po ang papasok dito sa industrial tree plantation, then may assurance po yung mga co-investors that they will renew the, the permit, the 25-year concession. So these are some of the areas where a developmental financial institution can invest. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, I filed my own uh, version of the bill, as a Maharlika. Maybe I'll be in consultation with Mr. Chair Kiamko. Uh, maybe he can help me uh, para uh, fine tune yung bill na yung uh, bill na ginagawa ko na para sa kabubutin man to ng taong bayan. So I'll be talking to you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Calixto, sir. Thank you very Thank you, much, uh, Senator Tulfo. At this point, we'd like to recognize Senator uh, Nancy Binay. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. And magandang umaga po. Um, siguro kay Mr. Chik Kiamko, um, at it, what's your recommendation for Maharlika? Well, number one, should we just forget talking about this bill? Or number two, pag in amend, if we introduce certain amendments, it would be acceptable to, to your group? Or dapat mag na lang ng um, another fund for specific use. Kasi parang yun yung naririnig ko sa inyo kanina na parang we can create parang a green fund, to, I guess, to uh, fund yung mga green projects or um, some, something similar to that. Uh, yes. Uh, well, it could be an expanded NDC or some other. First of all, uh, uh, the funding is should not come really from the GFIs or the central bank, you know, because it will create, create, uh, put our banking system at risk. So uh, that one. But it could be an expanded NDC or an MIF in which uh, there will be initial funding from the government and then there will be uh, co-investment from multilaterals, from foreign investors, etc. But for specific, so that it will not compete with the private sector because they're talking about PPP. So uh, when, when will it, uh, uh, when are the situations where it will not compete with the PPP? In a problem about going into uh, infrastructure projects, no? At the same time, uh, yung conflict of objectives which we raised, you know, will it seek to maximize the return or will it will look after public welfare? Kunyari sa PPP. Kunyari, sa, sa ESLEC, and like, tataas ba nila yung toll? They will have to keep on increasing the toll if you want to reach a certain rate of return. E, papano naman yung mga commuters natin pag ganoon nangyari? No? So, mas mainam na, na i-clarify natin objectives so that it, is, it does not compete with the private sector and that uh, merong, where there is a contribution by the government uh, to that project nga. For example, nga, as I told you, where there are property rights are uncertain, where it is more um, advantageous for government to do it, like uh, consolidating farmlands. Because even the DA says importante na to, to consolidate farmlands for bigger and better managed farms. Eh, mas mainam kung ang gobyerno ang gagawa nun. Hindi ba? And, and for that reason, oh, um, the Maharlika fund would be acceptable? Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, yes. Uh, if, as long as it's, not, again, not funded by the GFIs and the BSP, it's acceptable. Uh, I think there is a role for a, uh, for a Maharlika fund in certain instances. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Po. Um, sa land bank naman, Po, uh, you mentioned kanina na meron ho kayong 1.3 trillion investable amount. And then 261 billion ho yung sa agricultural loans. That amount ho ba is ideal na for you in, to, in terms of target? Ano, parang for land bank, magkano ho ba talaga dapat yung gusto nyo na ipautang sa ating mga magsasaka? For example, na kunyari, absorptive capacity is not a problem. Um, thank you, Senator uh, Binay. Yung, uh, the 1.3 trillion na investments, those are, as I mentioned earlier, basically uh, uh, government uh, issuances of bonds or T-bills. The two, hindi po kasali yung 261 billion na pinautang namin sa mga magsasaka at mga ibang players sa, to, sa agribusiness value chain. Uh, yung loan portfolio po namin, 1.1 trillion, dun po kasama yung uh, 261 billion. 
uh, to answer po yung uh, your question, uh, uh, will we be willing to, or, or will we be funding more loans to the agri sector if uh, absorptive capacity is not an issue? Our answer, ma'am, is yes, definitely, because uh, one the the that will have a greater impact, direct impact on the development of the countryside, which is basically the mandate of land bank, and um, the the returns from low issuances. Okay, and saner na ho. Meron na ho ba tayong ginawang pag-aaral kung paano natin bibigyan ng solusyon tong absorptive capacity? Uh, of the Agriculture Center. Yes, Paul. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, thank you for the question, uh, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, yung mga binanggit kanina ni, ni Mr. Chikiampo, actually, uh, yun, yun yung mga, mag, ma, mga magagandang solusyon dito. Kasi nga, ang nagiging problema is the uh, the bankability of the of the projects and uh, the the major um, limitation really is yung, yung, yung land mismo. So, ang isang maganda nga nito is uh, uh, kung, kung magkakaroon nga ng consolidation, uh, ito yung, ano, ito yung uh, makakasagot. And if you have yung uh, longer lease. Uh, right now, yung sa ating mga agricultural development products, uh, development programs, uh, nandun siya sa modernization. Uh, meron din tayo mga farm consolidation in the sugar. Uh, sugar industry. So, kung, kung itong mga to, and of course, yung cooperativism in the sugar industry, uh, I suppose, sila na yung, ano, sila na yung pwede maging, ano, maging uh, bankable. Uh, but going forward, it will really have to be uh, with respect to addressing the constraints to that low bankability. Uh, but for the current uh, uh, pipeline of programs, it has to do with the technology uh, yung mga, ano, mga inputs, the modernization po. But yung problema ho dun sa absorptive capacity. Which parang hindi nga lang to, Mr. Chairman, sa agriculture, di ba? I mean, DPWH, nagin natin naririnig, every time na we do discuss the budget, it's the absorptive capacity. So, kunwari, as na yada, meron na ho ba kayong ginawang pag-aaral or... Um, Na kung saan mabibigyan ng solusyon itong problema natin sa absorptive capacity. Uh, if I may, no. uh, yung pong, uh, I, I think yung sa issue ng sa DPWH, this is uh, with respect to implementation of projects. Uh, so, so kung dito po, actually isa na rin po sa pinag-uusapan namin with the, with the DBM, uh, na yun ang kailangan nating i-improve yung implementation capacity of our agencies. So, kung limbawa, merong... So, uh, meron, meron ho ba yung NEDA na, na plano kung paano nga natin masusolve yung, yung problema na yan? Kasi, di ba, parang mm -hmm. si Land Bank, hindi sila makapagpautang kasi nga yung nasa agriculture may problema sa absorptive capacity. So, why don't we solve that problem para si Land Bank can fulfill its mandate na tulungan yung ating mga magsasaka? Um, pwede po kami mag-submit ng ano, kasi medyo makulot po yung, ano, yung, yung usapin and uh, I, I think some of this will also require legislation uh, para ma-address yung iba-ibang mga constraints po. And would Maharlika solve that absorptive capacity? Um, kasi by, kung halimbawa po kasi by legislation, just like yung sa National Development Corporation, it was actually given the authority to consolidate lands up to 50,000 hectares, if I'm not mistaken. Na. So, so ganun kalaki kasi yung kailangan mo na scale. So given our current uh, regulatory framework, hindi pwede yan. Pero kasi dahil may legislation, nagawa yun. Kasi yun nga, government naman yung magpapatakbo nun. So I guess kung sa, kung sa Maharlika, if uh, there will be uh, you know that authority or the mandate of the of the the fund or or yung MIC nga to uh, uh, to have uh, to address those constraints. Then Pero wala rin sa mandate ng Maharlika to consolidate lands, de ba? So if yun yung isang problema, why don't we just? Um, kasi di ba yung isang ano daw is matanda na yung NDC 
So why don't we just uh, kumbaga, update it instead of creating another fund? Na kung ang problema is consolidation, it, it addresses that, that corporation already addresses that. Diba? So parang iti-tweak na lang natin, kumbaga, i, uh, ano yan, uh, mas adoptive dun sa current situation natin instead of starting with a new fund. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, Madam Senator, mas alam po ng Treasurer, <laughs> ng Bureau of Treasury, yung issue po ng sa National Development Corporation. Thank you. Siguro, Secretary, uh, Treasurer de Leon. <laughs> Ma'am, pwede pong, ano, uh, can just backtrack, nung sa absorptive capacity po, una pong unang question. Yung pong absorptive capacity natin, natin, hindi lang po dahil sa yung pag-implement ng projects, ang una rin po doon, yung ating budget. Uh, I'm sorry ma'am, bumabalik po lagi kami sa fiscal constraints na we cannot widen yung pong, uh, or yung accelerate yung infrastructure development kahit na po yung mga farm-to-market roads dahil nga uh, we are trying to uh, make do within the fiscal uh, uh, envelope that we have right now. Sa kasyempre ho, uh, Ma, pag malaki po yung deficit, malaki yung utang. So, no, ang ginagamit po natin ngayon, yung pong hindi po mapautang ni, ni Land Bank para ilagay po kay Maharlika. Ngayon po si Maharlika, sabi nga po, 100 billion lang yan, pero pwede po mapalago si Maharlika kasi nga po, will be going into co-investments sa private sector at doon po na-address yung capacity constraints dahil alam po natin, mas better in implementers po ang private sector. And lalong-lalo na po, will be able to attract yung pong mga foreign investors because they will have the technology, yung even yung capacity know-how. At the same time, we're also adjusting yung logistics problem natin. Diba sir, yung mga uh, post-harvest harvest facilities, yung mga storage facilities, yung pong mga ganun na pwedeng gawin po ng private sector. And with that, mapapalago pa po yung pagpapautang Dalawa pong both ways, hindi lang po si Maharli ka, kundi pati po yung pag, uh, in, uh, expand ng absorptive capacity ni Land Bank. So, yung pong, yung ganun po yung thinking namin. So, um, we're also doing some simulation analysis kasi po, we also did in terms of the portfolio ng fund. Kung himbawa po, uh, tinignan po namin yung ating mga other mga, uh, mga holding companies, mga the likes ng mga aboytis, mga ASEN, mga nag-invest po sa power, sa utilities, sa infrastructure. And we've seen how much yung pong kanilang return right now. So with that, and also, kung nag-invest po, um, bawa po lang sa portfolio allocation na 50-50, nag-50% po tayo sa capital uh, market, or nag-50% uh, po tayo sa infrastructure, lumalabas yun po na magiging mas malaki po yung return ni Land Bank rather than po ini-invest lang sa GS. Kasi po sa GS, siguro kikita sila ng what say 5% pero dito po pag kinumbine po with the Maharlika dahil meron po silang uh, fixed uh, investments at lumalaki po mas malaki po yung kanilang kikitain so there's really um room better room higher room for them to invest in this uh, portfolio salamat po Sen, can I just quickly really quickly um i just maybe it might be a good uh, idea that maybe we can do some uh, modeling maybe some fin some financial models for potential investments i mean of course you know it, it, there's no um, it won't be uh, it won't be as precise as the actual well, obviously but uh, maybe we can do some modeling of some scenarios that are possible should the maharlika uh, uh, come into existence you know just just at, at least so we can see more or less uh, what maybe based on some of the potential investments what sort of some basic modeling, so at least it would give uh, it would give the uh, committee some ideas on what sort of uh, what pot what is the potential for uh, Maharlika. Please uh, proceed. Uh, but um, at its present form, walang kikit, walang interest income ang land bank, di ba in DBP? Sa Maharlika at its present form, di ba wala kayong ano? Walang dividend, walang return na ganon eh. Correct. At its present form. Diba? So technically, yung 1.3 trillion nyo na ini-invest nyo ngayon sa um, equities and ano isa? Bonds? May, may, diba? Securities. May nakukuha kayo at the moment, right? Which is how, how many percent? Ho? Yeah. If I may answer, yes. Senator Bine, uh, through the chair. 
uh, the return on our equity is 14%. The average yield of our investment is uh, almost 4%, uh, ma'am. 4% of for the securities? Yes, ma'am. And then for equities? Ho. Uh, uh, the return on equity po is uh, 14%. 14%. Average yield po ng loans namin is about 5.75%. Uh, okay. And with Maharlika, it's zero. Its current uh, form po, the bill does not specify um, a guaranteed ROI. Pero wala kayo nung makukuha na 14%, 4%, none. No, ma'am. Uh, so but, wala but the nga. bill does not, uh, does not have any provision. And, uh, and pag inalis namin yung sovereign guarantee, would you still want to be part of Maharlika? I think I've answered that uh, when Senator Gatchalian uh, asked it. Hindi, ano nga ho, kasi kanina dun sa tanong ni Senator Sherwin, hindi naman niya sinabi na aalisin yung sovereign guarantee. Parang ngayon, oh, di ba? Parang ngayon okay kayo kasi alam niya naman na na guarantee dyan, di ba? Kahit walang return. If there will be no guarantees uh, on our investment, then we will have to conduct the usual due diligence that we conduct whenever we lend or whenever we invest. Po. Okay, can you ano, submit um, to us? Because there are suggestions that you have to sovereign guarantee. Uh, what would that, the implication of the land bank and the DBP when we inalis namin tong sovereign guarantee? Uh, it, if the guarantees will be removed, uh, uh, Madam Senator, and uh, there will be no regulatory relief given to the investors, the land bank and DBP, the investment will uh, carry a 100% weight on our assets and will be... Uh, deducted from our capital, and so it will adversely affect our capital adequacy ratio. Eh, yung you. scenario naman, oh, kunwari, walang sovereign guarantee, pero may makuha kayo, let's say, uh, 16%, 20%, would that be acceptable? That will be a very attractive investment, uh, Madam uh, Senator. So at what percentage kayo comfortable? Uh, <laughs> our... Uh, com um, Comparative ratio, ma'am, is uh, because we are investing and we will be in the fund and in the corporation, in the MIC, for the uh, long term. Uh, it will be compared to the return and the equity of the government in land bank. And, and uh, in last year, million. the return of the government's equity in land bank was 14%. So, dapat more than 14%, Paul. Ah, siguro, si, si, Treasurer Delian, kaya ho ba yun? With uh, Maharlika? Sir, ganito na lang, ma'am, if I may lang po. Uh, first of all, siguro ikakwalify rin po ni ma'am Cecil na yung pong 14%, meron pong non-recurring din po doon because yung pong acquisition ng UCPB, so ma'am, which they declared as dividend. So, they should look at it in yung long-term ano po average. Ngayon po, in terms of the return, yung pong, uh, we're as all looking at the best practices. Yes, syempre, we want positive return. So that's something that's higher than inflation. At ang long-term target naman po natin would be siguro sa 2 to 4 percent po ni Banco Central. So it should be higher than the inflation para real positive return. Pangalawa po, it should be siguro, it would be something higher than the cost of borrowing nung po ni Maharlika, which could be also something similar to a uh, government um, borrowing cost, no? So ngayon po kami, ng hirap, ng RTV po namin, ongoing pa po, uh, ang yield, ang, <laughs> ang coupon po namin doon, 6%. So, yun po. Ma yung, magkano yung, yung yield? Ang, ang coupon po is 5%, ma'am. 5%. Ah, uh, uh, 6% pala, yung RTV namin na 5.5. So, last day na po ngayon ng aming offer period. Ilang years po yung? 5.5 <laughs> years po, ma'am. So... Ah, uh, yun po. So, yun pong yung yun po yung mga parameters that we're going to look into. Yun pong uh, should be providing us the positive uh, return, 
So higher than inflation. Pangalawa po, yun nga po, um, it should also be higher than your uh, cost of borrowing para nababayaran po natin yung ating utang. So that would be the parameter siguro po when we're looking into the portfolio. Yeah. So at the moment, oh, what is the cost of borrowing? Namin po, uh, mga 5%, 5 to 6%. Five, and then inflation rate? Um, Mataas lang po ngayon, 8.7, the last print. Pero ang normal po dapat, they will attain the 2 to 4% target po ng BSP. Talaga ho, makakabalik tayo sa 2 to 4%? Confident, ma'am. Fighting. Ng inflation? <laughs> oh nga eh. Can BSP... Uh, uh, meron ho ba tayong magandang ganun na hinaharap next year? Pero matagal pa ho yung next year eh. Kaka-start pa lang ng 2023 eh. Your Honor, by next year, ang projection natin ay uh, within target na tayo. Kasi ang sources of inflation naman natin, puro uh, pinag-umpisahan, mga driven by supply. Kaya lang ngayon, meron din kaming nakikita na uh, may spillover sa demand. So, for for example, lo, for 2023, itong quarter ito, what was your projection? Um, nung nakaraang uh, uh, monetary board meeting, Ang ano ho namin, ang projection uh, per year ang ginagawa namin eh. So, nung nakaraang monetary board meeting, ang aming uh, projected uh, inflation for the year ay uh, nasa uh, nasa uh, um, nasa four and a half percent po average for this year um, pero ngayon uh, actually bukas uh, magmi-meeting ang monetary board kasi mag bibigay kami ng mga revised projection. Sa ano ho, gagawin niya ng 8. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ano pa ho yun? For, uh, for deliberation bukas, at uh, ang main ano doon, driver would be, we will take the January inflation into account. Kasi mataas ho yung January inflation, uh, higher than what we had uh, projected. Yun hong uh, projection ng BSP, ang uh, nung January ay uh, hanggang 8.3 yung range ng projection namin. Yung nangyari ay 8.7. So, above our uh, uh, projected range of uh, inflation. So, this would have to be uh, modified yung 4.5. So, may scenario ho na tataas na yung projection niya for this year? Uh, malamang ho. <laughs> As to the actual projection uh, that would have to be uh, uh, announced uh, tomorrow okay. after the monetary board meeting. Sige po. And dun sa Marley ka, ano ba yung projected ano nyo, uh, return or what would be the yield? Uh, Ma'am, um, we're doing uh, preliminary simulations lang po and that's something you can submit to you. Pero right now po, uh, given po yung the way we're looking and we look into yun nga po yung returns of our um, mga, yung ating mga holding companies na mga infrastructure, um, power, utilities, infrastructure, logistics, and then also um, looking into the portfolio. Um, kung bawa, minimirror natin yung pong, uh, asset allocation ng Temasek, ng GIC, we're conservatively mga 5%. And then, um, yung pong moderate case, mga 7 to 9. And um, pinaka, well, I think we're also reaching mga 12%. So, um, Hindi, pero kasi, Treasury, di, di ba you said 5%? Conservative eh, po Di ba yun. currently, kung umuutang ko tayo ng 5%? So, uh, ma'am, kasi, so parang... that's very, kasi we are putting on the worst case scenario na parang ano ba yung pinaka-pangit na performance ngayon. And we know na medyo, 
hindi naman po ma uh, maganda yung performance of the market right now. So, but in, on a moderate case, we're looking at 7 to 9 percent. So, siguro, kunwari, yung um, currently, yung pag umutang tayo, it's 5 percent, right? So, sa Maharli ka, let's say 7 percent, eh, di ba meron pa hutong ano? Ano yan? Parang may, magbabayad pa tayo ng, um, I don't know what's the correct term, yung parang agent's fee. Uh, ah, kasama na po ma'am lahat doon kasi this is already parang yung, yung return yun na po net of taxes, net of pasok everything. Pasok na yun doon sa, uh -oh. hindi kasi di ba yung magmamanage ng fund? Parang, Asa, per, pasok na rin po doon ma'am. How much other, is that? Uh, how much is that out of the 5%? Uh, mga, di ba yung parang sa mga investment banker parang meron silang, ano ba yung correct term doon? Ah, yung pong uh, asset, yung ma fund management fee. Hindi commission yung word eh. It's, uh, it's something else. Management fee po, sinasabi. Uh, mga point, ano, less than 1% lang. Mga point zero five lang. Kami nga po pa nag, ano, 5 dips lang yun eh. And wala dun sa bill na ano, no? Meron naman pong cap on the admin cost. Which is how much? The 2%. 2%. So, na-incorporate niyo na yung 2% yes, that's a 5%? Yeah, we also did yung pong tinatawag nating um, risk return. So, parang nakita po namin na for every peso na you invested, ang balik po 1.62 uh, uh, peso. So, yun po yung parang uh, ina-adjust po natin for the risk. Kasi against a risk-free asset. So, may mga ganun naman pong nagawa ng mga studies. Pero, of course, we're still refining it para mas maging, ano po, um, given uh, yung market uh, developments. Uh, siguro, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, hanggang wala kasi itong mga portfolio, parang ang hirap mag-decide eh. Uh, speaking as a layman, di ba, parang pag-uutang ka sa bangko, kailangan, uh, alam mo na kung saan gagasos niyo, di ba, either magpapatayo ka ng bahay or uh, may negosyo kang papasukan. But, at its present form, yung sa Maharli ka, parang hindi namin alam kung saan gagastusin eh. Uh, yes. For as long as we don't have that, parang yung comfort level nga is uh, medyo hindi, hindi, ano ba yan? Yes. Parang hindi kampante. Yeah. I'm sure the uh, NEDA and uh, the financial institutions have uh, fina people very capable of doing financial models. So for the comfort of the committee, perhaps we can ask them to do some financial models for, or, the, siguro, for the fund. Siguro, just to backtrack, Mr. Chairman, hindi ba nung naisip niyo tong Maharli ka fund, dapat naisip niyo muna kung saan kagastusin? Wala bang, um, can you like present to us when you were doing the, ano ba yan, TWG, na parang uh, meron na kayong Oh, for example, ito yung pagagamitan namin and ito yung kailangan. Kasi ay, dapat meron kayong pinaghugutan kung saan nyo sinabi na kailangan namin ng 50 billion, uh, 50 billion from Land Bank or 25 billion from DBP. Meron ho ba kayong masasubmit sa committee na during your TWG na nag, para kayong modeling or something like that? We can submit po, uh, and yun sa legislation naman po, nakalagay doon yung mga allowable investments that we also have cited. Tapos ma'am, I think also NEDA, uh, they also already identified mga 87 projects uh, na parang pwede pong uh, doon mag-invest si Maharlika. And submitted na sa committee yung 87? Uh, no, do you, uh, please, uh, we will instruct them now to please submit those and... Uh... Thank what you. Are... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I yield now the floor to the minority floor leader. Yes, uh, at this point, we'd like to recognize, um, uh, we'd like to recognize uh, Sen Coco Pimentel. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will, I will just ask the, my questions, my cross-examination questions during the plenary. Should this ever reach the plenary, uh, Mr. Chairman? Basta from the point of view of the minority, just for the information of everybody, minority po kasi kami, we just, we observe the majority aligned with the admin, and we see what you're doing. Uh, you're conducting a very expensive uh, public uh, brainstorming. Yan ang ginagawa ninyo eh. Expensive in terms of resources and in time, which you should have done months ago before actually making the proposal. Yan ang, yan ang nangyayari po. I mean, I mean, I see the National Treasurer sending instructions to the uh, LBL uh, Land Bank uh, 
uh, representatives to tone down the 14%. Nag-usap na po kayo beforehand. May non-recurring pala dun. Di sinabihan nyo na sana. Don't use that 14% rate of return kasi may non-recurring dun. I mean, uh, well, this is just the minority speaking. No? Uh, should this ever reach the, but I hope that it does not in its current form, uh, the National Treasurer assures us na merong listahan ng mga allowable investments Eh, meron pang last paragraph dun eh. And all other investments as may be decided by the board. Di sino naglulukuhan dito? Hindi <laughs> ba? You make it appear to Japanese investors, oh, we're very strict. Pero sa dulo, oh, may lusot. Oh, there is a 2% cap on, uh, ano yan, administration and operating expenses. But there is a section 17 which allows additional expenses na wala ng cap. Oh, eh. uh, well, at any rate, uh, Mr. Chairman, I mean, being an administ administration measure, masyadong, well, the Senate should not uh, allow this to pass in its current form. It's a very disappointing to, to be an administration measure. Ang assumption kasi, it's, if it's an administration measure, Backed up by all the best lawyers and the uh, bill drafters of the administration na po yan. And yet, ito'y resulta. And then, we hear news about the president uh, reporting the Japanese investors are excited to invest in the Maharlika uh, fund. Where is the mechanism in the current bill? How do they invest? Wala din dun. Oh. Sa mechanism, kasi sa, sa distribution of profits, wala yatang... Hindi yata na envision ang distribution of profit to a third party participating investor. Wala dun eh. Oo. Tapos, uh, this Maharlika Investment Corporation can directly give ayuda. Andun yung naka-insert yung word na directly. Ano na ang meaning nun? I mean, another DSWD. <laughs> so what are we doing here? I mean, uh, di ba? I mean, the... There will now be ayuda distributed to the poorest of the poor. Ang uh, tarpaulin sa likod is Maharlika Investment Corporation. Ano nangyari? But what's happening? What is happening? What is the real purpose of this uh, uh, na proposal? Uh, hindi po namin makuha um, sa pagbabago ng anyo, nagbago ang anyo sa House, pagdating dito sa Senate. I, uh, we noticed also, Mr. Chairman, that the... Yung bang introductory statement, no? yung uh, explanatory note, no? Explanatory note of the bill of the, our chairman does no, no longer mention sovereign wealth fund. So definitely nag-shift na. But the bill mentions the Santiago principles, which is about what? Sovereign wealth fund. So, ito from the minority lang po ito, no? I mean, sayang eh. I mean, an administ uh, administration measure... And yet, the quality of the uh, proposal is that low, is that confused. Sana po ayusin na lang po muna ninyo. So that, sayang, yung time ko sana na uh, inaaral ko na ito sa ARCEP. Ano pa? Inaaral ko na ito sa uh, cultural mapping, sa aral uh, intervention program ni Senator Ruin Gatsalian. Oh, ganun po, ganun po nangyayari. We are really conducting a very expensive public brainstorming sessions on a proposal coming from the administration na not well thought out, not well planned. Naghahanap ang mga majority senators ng business plan. Wala. <laughs> What's happening? So, yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. I hope uh, this is not rushed. Whatever you can cure, please cure. And then... Uh, Nabanggit na ako actually when I first heard this sabi ko hindi ba to parang parang NDC rin eh. so I think Mr. Chikamko Chikamko mentioned NDC and uh, uh Yusek Edilion if we can if should there be another hearing Mr. Chairman let's invite NDC uh, and uh according to my staff under daw yan sa DTI so saman na natin sila so that they can talk about their history, their funding, uh, their achievements. 
Hindi siya sikat eh. Hindi siya sikat na corporation, but it's a GOCC as far as I know. Hindi siya sikat. Funded, uh, funded with 10 billion in 1979. What would, be, what would 10 billion be, ma'am, uh, in, in today's uh, value if it's in 1979? Sige ma'am, ano yun, Ineda, Ineda na, or BSP ang makaano sa akin. Meron na, meron na rin akong estimate ng konti. Ah. Hindi pa rin siya sikat. Hindi pa rin siya, hindi pa rin siya sa Norway's uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund. Or yung parati natin pina, binabanggit na Temasek ng Singapore na nalugi naman ng 200 million dollars dun sa pag-invest nila sa FTX. Uh, it's a professionally run uh, uh, wealth fund or ma uh, asset management fund. Nag-invest sa company na naka-shorts, walang ano, naka-shorts yung CEO, walang board of directors, naglalaro ng uh, video game, oh. tapos talo 200 million dollars, professionally run uh, investment corporation na maraparati nating sinasite na bilib na bilib tayo. <clears throat> so, what would it be, ma? mga 200 billion, no? Siguro? Estimate lang. Sino? May all others and other investments. <laughs> so, ganun po yun. No? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying na we gave NDC by law uh, 10 billion pesos in 1979. Malaking halaga po yun. And it's na, hindi pa rin siya ganun kasikat hanggang ngayon. I mean, but... Uh, and I see some of the purposes of the Maharlika. Parang ganun lang din sa NDC. Yes, ma'am. Ano ma'am estimate natin? Uh, 183, Senator. 183. No? So in a round off ko na sa 200, give of take a little mistake of 10%, di ba? Oh. So, yan po yun, no? So, that's the experience with the NDC. So, ano lang po kami. So, the, major, the minority will just be here to observe... Uh, how the majority is uh, processing and handling this issue, and we will be ready with our questions during the plenary. But we are praying that this, this will not reach the plenary, uh, Mr. Chairman, if, uh, if, uh, if ganito lang po ta, ka, kalito. Uh, actually, ginalaw, gina, yung Senate version nagbago na ngayon. House version may apat na sa section 2 doon. Nandun yung apat na na goals ng, uh, ng ano na when I when I when people who know the finance world uh, read the four objectives parang sabi nila how can all those four be achieved all at the same time uh, andun po sa house bill so so okay so we are just here to ano to present the other other the other possible uh, points of view uh, Mr. Chairman to test the validity of uh, the proposal so all all the way from what is the real reason why we are entertaining this proposal where would the co funds come from what will be the role of this corporation yung mga safeguards nandiyan uh, all the way to the name all the way to the name at the plenary level we, we will uh, ask uh, even about about the name of the uh, corporation, uh, Mr. President. So, you know, Mona, Mr. Chairman, thank you. thank you. Thank you to our minority floor leader. Uh, at this point, uh, since we also consider the opinions of the general public in this hearing, we have some questions posted by netizens from uh, the Senate FB Live, and I'd like to I know, uh, share these questions with our resource persons. Uh, question one. Uh, bakit kailangan invest pa ang mga government offices yung investable funds nila sa Maharlika? Di po ba nila pwede invest directly yung funds nila at wag na dumaan sa Maharlika? So if you can answer, uh, Ma'am uh, Rosa uh, uh, Treasurer De Leon. Um, an nabanggit po kanina ni uh, President Cecil na yun nga po, meron silang 1.3 trillion investable funds and at the same time, I think sa uh, DBP around 800 uh, billion naman po ang available nila. So, but at the same time po, hindi nila mas uh, napapa, napapalend who yun dahil may mga constraints like po yung single borrower's limit, 
meron din po silang mga issues about yung mga regulatory compliances. So, with this, ano po, uh, Maharlika Fund, they're just putting po mga around uh, 4% of their investable funds. At with this amount na like 100 billion, mas ma wider po yung options natin, mas marami po tayong pwedeng paggamitan at uh, dalihin po ito para ma-accelerate ang infrastructure development natin at pati po mga social services. Makakatulong rin po ito para po mas ma mabawasan po yung pressure sa fiscal uh, sa ating budget dahil nga po uh, hindi po natin masyadong mapalakihan ng spending natin dahil otherwise mas magbo-bloat po ang ating fiscal deficit. Uh, isa pang uh... yes go ahead Hindi, kasi treasury dela niyo you mentioned reg, reg, parang isa dun sa constraint yung regu regula regulatory function hindi ba makukurya ng legislation kung ilalagay niyo po sa legislation like po yung uh, wala pong uh, charge sa kapital um, pwede pong makure po yun na hindi na kailangan ng maharlika fund Ah, kailangan sa Maharlika fan po yun. <laughs> Pag nilagay po nila. So, hindi na po kailangan ng guarantee namin. Hindi, kasi di ba parang you were saying kanina na kasi di ba ang tanong bakit kailangan pa ng um, Maharlika fan? But kasi ma'am, yung iba po doon uh, in accordance with the Basel. So, I'm not sure kung pwede po legislation mag-cure noon. Uh, another, uh, from our FB Live, isa pang uh, may netizen na may katanungan. Pwede din kaya kami mag-invest sa Maharlika? Uh, ang isa ho sa mga uh, um, ini-envision sa Maharlika, magkakaroon po maraming mga funds. Yung sub-fund po. Yung sub main fund, tapos magkakaroon po mga sub-fund. So, meron po tayong sub-fund for high uh, yield income uh, in uh, mga investments. So, pwede doon pumasok po yung mga individuals. Pwede rin po silang pumasok pag nagkaroon po ng mga infrastructure uh, projects. Pwede rin pong mag... Uh, mag uh, kasi pwede pong mag... Ano, ng, ng debt po yung pong uh, fund na yon So, pwede pong doon po bumili. Like yung mga retail treasury products po ng treasury. So, pwede pong structure na yung fund, magkaroon po ng ganong mga mechanisms. Thank you. At, at this point, I'd like to recognize uh, the, 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 president, the presence of uh, Senator Francis Torrentino. I'd also like to recognize him for some uh, questions, and after which we'll, Senator Wynn would like to ask uh, some questions on his second round. Thank you. Mr. Chair, although, although I'm, I'm tired because I came from just came from Subic in Olonga po. Met all your local treasurers and assessors. Some were apprehensive about this. Some are supportive. The outset, ako ata yung unang nag-support dito. Just, just some questions, although uh, not physically prepared. Siguro next round, dagdagan ko. Taxation. Taxation. Initially, based on my my computation, although I'm not good in math, the minority leader is better prepared. Perhaps there's somebody here from the BIR. Uh, from the bills filed, the Senate version and the House version, can I be clarified as to, simply muna, mahirap yung next, next, next uh, hearing, perhaps I'll be asking about the redemption the accruals, etc. Et Simply muna tayo, documentary stamp. Documentary stamp tax. My computation is that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, who is gonna answer? Most likely, depends on the number, but most likely national treasurer. National treasurer. Good, I'm uh, directly in front of I'll your firing line. I'll try my very <laughs> Based on my computation, for instance, this, this is hypothetical. There is there is, would you confirm that there is a possibility at the outset that the government might lose potential earnings on documentary stamp tax alone? My computation is this. If the MIC has issued shares of stock or mutual fund certificates, the documentary stamp tax would be 2 pesos on each 200 pesos. Tama po ba yan? Computation ko ngayon? Based on NIRC? Sir, uh, pasensya po at the outset, uh, I would say na hindi po ako familiar dun sa tax code. Uh, Anybody from the BIR here? Finance, BIR, uh, 
uh, tax expert, taxpayer, tax evader, or what? Di bale, ito na lang, hypothetical. You can answer this next. Sige, uh, sige sir. Uh, you might, you might tapos, be able to answer. We'll consult na lang po yes. with BIR. So, under the House bill, which has a 250 billion capitalization, correct? Uh, 200 na bago na? Nga, five. Five na. Oh, dito muna tayo. 250 sa luma po. Sige po. Kunyo, kunyo, luma na itong sa akin eh. Kasi uh, yung pong luma. kapupunta ko sa ibang lugar. Iba na pala yung hawak kong papel. Sorry. For instance, if, it, if, if, it's, if it's the original 250 billion capitalization, the documentary stamp tax payable is 2.5 billion pesos upon issuance. Kung luma pa rin itong uh, Senate bill with the 75 billion capitalization, the DST payable is 750 million upon issuance. Pag ano naman, pag, uh, if MIC issues that instruments, the DST rate is 1 peso and 50 centavos on each 200 pesos. So uh, under the House bill before, but what the computation would still be applicable, 250 billion capitalization, the DST payable is 1.875 billion upon issuance. Under the Senate bills, with 75 billion capitalization, the DST payable is 562.5 million pesos upon, issue, upon issuance. Kung exempt, kung exempt kagad, wala na kagad yung, yung 2.5 billion upon issuance. Wala na kagad yung 750 million pesos upon issuance. If I may suggest, ma'am, your answer should go like this. Your honors, coma, in the long run, coma. Tuloy mo na. Malaki mawawala, oh. Um, ano ba to? Your honors, uh, <laughs> if I may po, uh, given yung pong ano nyo, yung... Question yun sa akin, ma'am. <laughs> ano po, um, what I can say, pwede po bang uh, we just refer to our Bureau of Internal Revenue para po uh, we can uh, confirm po Assuming yung computation nyo. Assuming my figures nyo. are correct. Assuming my figures are correct. How do you offset this? Initially, wala, no? Um, Hindi mo tinuloy yung, yung uh, nakasubong predicate ko. In the long run, Your Honors. <laughs> uh, ganito po mangyayari. So, mawawala nga po sa collection ng national government. Pero at the same time, meron naman po mga expenditures na nasa sana, nasa budget, na pwede pong uh, mag implement na po ang gagastos na yon Ngayon na po ay the Maharlika Fund. Kasi po, we can... Diba, with the Maharlika Fund, some of the projects po ng national government which are already in the priority list, pwede pong ipondo na po ng Maharlika Fund. So, meron pong magka, pwede pong magkaroon ng wash. So, so 2.5 billion, 750 billion. Mapupunta po dun sa... Uh, hindi na po uh, mapupunta po doon sa Maharlika Fund na siya naman po magpopondo ng mga projects na sana gagawin po ng national government. Can, can you explain that during the next hearing once you have consulted with the BIR? Sige po. As to the, the shift accuracy po. of all of this. I have another question, uh, Mr. Chairman, but apparently, with all due respect, uh, the BIR is not here. It has something to do not just with the documentary uh, tax, stamp tax, but the tax that would involve unrealized gains. Baka next meeting na rin? Oh, ano. I have questions concerning unrealized gains and the taxes on income upon redemption. So the, 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 the precept is this. Uh, When, when the investor invests, there is a transfer of ownership, correct? So if there is a transfer of ownership, the investor is now the owner. Under both bills coming from the house and the bills coming from this chamber, example. Tama? So yung accruals, kaya nyo explain yun o next meeting na? Turn na lang po, sir, yung BIR po magsumagot. BIR so, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we request the presence of the BIR representative, BIR commissioner, assistant commissioner, to better uh, educate this committee 
as to the probable tax implications of this. But again, I reiterate, I'm supportive. And then my other question, Mr. Chairman, I, I hope uh, I'm looking around. I'm, I hope it can be answered by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Securities and Exchange Commission, present, online. Uh, can, can we, uh, no, can, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we, can we uh, summon the chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, for, for the next hearing? So we go to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Is there a representative from the SEC online? If there is, please identify yourself and uh, please speak. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. I'm Attorney Aljun Lacanaria from the Office of the General Counsel of the SEC. Ah, uh, share in, share in yung sumasagot da, sa, dati sa amin eh. <laughs> sa laptop, sa ano ka, so okay ka namin. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes po. So just, just quick questions. Uh, concerning the uh, Securities Regulation Code. So how, how would you term the uh, documents to be issued here? Are, there secur are they securities, ma'am? The, sorry, sorry. If I invest, yes, sir. if I invest, uh, I get the paper. The type of investment that the, that the MIC will issue are securities under the bill. So, if they are securities and can be sold, resold, uh, would you require registration? Sir, considering that, considering that the um, that the MIC is considered a charter GOCC, they will be exempt from the registration of securities under the SRC. Since, they are, since these are technically issued by the government. So, so you're now invoking Section 9 of the Securities Regulation Code. Section 9.1, requirement of registration under subsection 8.1 shall not, as a general rule, apply to any of the following classes, securities issued or guaranteed by the government of the Philippines or any political subdivision or agency thereof, or by any person controlled or supervised by law and acting as an instrumentality of the government. Yes, sir. What, what, about, uh, what about the apparent uh, the apparent differences between the House bill and the Senate bills? Na aral niyan? Sir, we weren't able to compare pa po, um, uh, the, uh, the stated differences. Okay. On what provision? Let, let me let me uh, uh, let me clarify you and guide you here. The Senate bills, or oh, the, the House bill, muna. The House bill, the House bill, apparently has no problem with the the, the securities regulations code because it already exempts. Ito na pag natin kanina. It specified that only GFIs are exempt from regulatory restrictions. On the Senate bills. The provisions contradict with the SRC. The bills provide that the SRC should be made to apply. Should be made to apply. Na basa niyo yun, ma'am? Yes, sir. Uh, maybe, sir, um, the intention of the of the provision that the SRC will apply on on the MIC and the MIF is maybe on the provision on transparency and disclosure. Because there is a provision in the in the bill. That, which, um, which bill are you referring to? The requirements under the, uh, under the SRC shall be um, followed by the MIC. Ano bang bill ang tinutukoy niyo, ma'am? The House bill or the the Senate version? Ulitin ko, ma'am. Uh, for instance, ma'am, the House bill categorizes the MIC as a GOCC while the Senate bills define it as a state investment body. Kung hindi pa ako nababago to, baka nabago na, uh, Mr. Chairman, ginulo ko lang kayo. Hence, by applying the SRC, SRC, MIF is not exempt from registration. Okay? If it is the intention, uh, with all due respect to my colleagues who filed, the, including the chairman, if it is the intention to make the Senate 
to make the Senate version to make the SRC rules on registration applicable on the FI, MIF bill, it should have been stated there. Tama po ba yan, ma'am? Nag-submit po ba kayo ng position paper? Um, sir, we have submitted a position paper, but on the particular inquiries of Senator Lauren Legarda and ASG. C can you... But we have submitted a position paper on this, um, Your Honor. M Mr. Chairman, can we require the SEC to be present likewise physically during the next hearing? Hindi ko na po itutuloy ito kasi... Yes, we can request yes. that. And, and including the, the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Yan lamang po, ayoko na pong patagalin yung pananghalihan nila. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Senator Thank you, uh, Tolentino. At this point, uh, we'd like to recognize Chairman, Senator... Uh, uh, just a request oh, yes. sa SEC. Can they make a position paper on the whole bill? Kasi parang yung sinabit pala nila was doon kay Senator Lauren Legarda lang. Uh, please, uh, can you... Uh, furnish us with a, your opinion on the whole Maharlika bill. Yes, Mr. Chair, we will submit a position paper on the whole. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, we'd like to the we'd like to recognize uh, Senator Gachalian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, another chance of uh, clarifying some issues. I'll, I'll go back to uh, uh, the presentation of Mr. Uh, Chikyamko of FEF, and one of the issues here is the uh, funding source, uh, particularly uh, he mentioned uh, funding source from the BSP, uh, Mr. Chikiamko, and uh, it's, it's also in the presentation, uh, there's also uh, a note here that the net worth of BSP, NW's net worth, no? I would assume, tama po ba? here in your presentation, from 145 billion in December of 2019 uh, to 885 billion in uh, 2020. No. So there's a decrease. Um, and uh, I think the argument here is, uh, here's also written, we need a strong BSP in the area of economic and geopolitical uncertainty. We all know that um, at this time, uh, the world has become s super uncertain because of the Ukraine issue here in our uh, region. Uh, oil has been fluctuating wildly, so is um, currencies are fluctuating wise, uh, wildly. Well, one day we wake up at 59 per dollar, now we wake up at 54 per dollar. So it's really uncertain. So I think the argument here is we, have, we need to have a strong Banco Central. Um, what, what is the present capitalization now, um, uh, Deputy Governor? Your Honor, it's uh, 60 billion pesos. To date, it's 60 billion pesos? Yes. Okay. Because what the, in the balance sheet in 2021 is 50 billion pesos. It's 50, and uh, there is an additional 10 billion. So in, in to date, 2022, uh, 2023, uh, it would be at 60 billion. 60 billion. Um, Mr. Chairman, in 2019, uh, we enacted a law to increase the capitalization of BSP. Tama po ba, Deputy Governor? Uh, tama po yan. And the uh, target is... Um, 200 billion pesos, correct? Tama, tama po. That law was enacted in 2019. Uh, from 2019 to date, how come only 10 billion was increased? Um, ano po yun eh, dahil sa pandemic. So, so there's... lahat ng uh, ahensya ng gobyerno nagtutulungan para ma-address yung, uh, uh, yung impact ng pandemic sa ekonomiya at nag-decide po na ano uh, wag na munang uh, 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 ipursu yung kapitalisasyon. So, ibigay muna sa panglaban sa pandemic? Apo. All right. But the, now, we all agree that the pandemic is already almost over. No? Wala na nga tayong mas dito. Eh. No? So, and everyone's going to the mall. And uh, I remember 
when we were discussing, Senator Binay was there, um, during the discussion of uh, that bill, uh, that's RA 11211, an act amending Republic Act number 7653, otherwise known as the New Central Bank Act, and for other purposes. Uh, when we were discussing this, the debates actually started in 2016. Ganun ka yung debates. And let me just read an excerpt from the transcript. Uh, that time it was BSP Governor Tetanko was, uh, was speaking. Uh, we present to the Senate the case for ensuring the corporate viability of the VSP. We seek for an increase in its capitalization by 150 billion. The economy has expanded. The financial system it supervises has grown many times over, while the BSP capitalization has remained constant in the last 23 years. To better manage the risk it faces in its, in its operations, we seek the authority to establish adequate loss allowances and create reserve buffers. In recognition that the funds deployed by the BSP are public in nature, we ask for the restoration we can skip that, no? And it goes, uh, yun tax exempt kasi yun. We'll go to the next paragraph. Mr. Chairman, we wish to convey to you that the BSP, once strengthened, can be even more responsive in meeting the challenges to the economy and the financial system over the coming decades. And even stronger BSP, and even stronger BSP can help more efficiently create the space for the Philippine economy to continue and flourish despite the many challenges it will face. That's in 2016 po. Uh -huh. So in 2016, the, the intention was there to increase the capitalization to 150 billion. Uh -huh. no? We understand uh -huh. that the pandemic was an uh, unforeseen event. Everyone had to give their dividends to fight the pandemic. But now that the pandemic is over, we're back to normal business uh -huh. of increasing your capitalization because uh -huh. as early as 2016, we were made to understand uh -huh there is an urgent need to strengthen the BSP because our economy has expanded 11.3 times over, you know, and the BSP's capitalization has not been touched for 23 years. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, so why the change in Your tune? honor, uh, tama po yung mga arguments. Actually, uh, meron ako mga figures na tinitignan dito. Magmula noong 1993 hanggang 2017, um, ang in nominal terms, uh, nominal kasi uh, peso ang pinag-usapan, yung ekonomiya ay lumago ng 9.7 times. At actually, um, yung kapitalisasyon na natili sa 50 billion lamang. Uh, magmula ng 2017 hanggang 2021, uh, lumago pa ulit ang ekonomi uh, 1.2 times. So, dun, uh, in-underscore nun yung importansya ng uh, pagtaas ng kapitalisasyon ng BSP at uh, nananatili po yun. Pero yung ano namin, yung uh, uh, punto ngayon, uh, yung, <clears throat> yung bill naman, ang binibigay ay yung unang dalawang taon, 100%, nung dividendo na uh, iririmit ng BSP mapupunta doon sa Maharlika Investment Fund. So delay po 'yun ng ano ng 2 years tapos noon hati yung ano yung dividendo hanggang sa mapuno yung kapitalisasyon ng BSP. Um, yung uh, balance sheet ho naman ng BSP nag-improve na in the meantime. Kaya ang assessment ay kayang uh, uh, kayang uh, i uh, i accommodate yung uh, delay ng ano ng uh, ng kapitalisasyon ngayon uh, yun hong uh, sinait naman na figure i think na explain ko na rin kanina kung bakit bumaba yung net worth ng BSP between 2019 and 2022, uh, yung net worth ho kasi ano eh, uh, assets minus liabilities. Pag tinignan ho natin yung liabilities, yung currency issued 
uh, lumago no from 1.6 uh, mm. about 1.6 uh, 1.7 trillion pesos nung 2019. Ngayon yung preliminary October figure ng um, teka, ng uh, uh, currency ay mga uh, higit na sa 2 trillion pesos. Almost 2.1 trillion. Uh, unaudited pa ho yun. Um, uh, ang importante ho dong ano um, yung currency treated siya as liability nung BSP uh, pero hindi to katulad ng liability ng ibang korporasyon na uh, kailangan mong bayaran Deputy Governor hindi ho yan yung sinabi niyo sa amin noong 2016 um, yung sinasabi niyo ho ngayon ang layo ho and already transcripts sa technical working yes. group in 2016. This was uh, from Deputy uh, Governor Aquino. No? Uh, I think baka ginigundo ko. Uh, ah, Vicente Aquino. Ayaw. Babasahin ko sa inyo. Ito ho uh, yung transcript. transcript. Of course, the first major proposed amendment to the Banco Central Charter is the increased capitalization from 50 to 200 billion. So a proposed increase of by 150 billion. Mr. Yes. Chairman, the compelling justification for this proposed major amendment is that a full and increased capitalization of 150 billion for the Banco Central will ensure financial strength of the nation's central monetary authority, which is the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. There is no gainsaying that the scale and complexity of the Banco Central's responsibilities has been magnified by the growth of the Philippine economy and the rapid expansion of the Philippine financial system. And, and well, it goes on. Based on the available accurate statistical data, our economy in real terms as of December 2015 was 11.3 times bigger or has grown by a factor of 11.3 times since 1993 from 1.3 trillion in 1993 to 15 trillion as of end of 2015. The rapid phase of growth of the size of the banking system is actually even higher at 12.2 times the total banking resources existing as of 1993 or 1993. And the size of the balance sheet of the, balance sheet of the central bank has grown more than eightfold since the creation in 1993. The assets have also risen from a measly $518 billion in 1993 to 4.3 trillion as of 2015. The total assets, the total liabilities have similarly ballooned from 502 billion 20 years ago to 4.2 trillion as of December, as of end of December 2015. Ang tapoy yung ano, yung emphasis. The Banco Central, as a central monetary authority, has been lagging behind its peers not only in the region but also in other parts of the world. And as the nation's only central monetary authority, the BSP needs a larger or bigger capitalization to enable it to meet the growing needs of the expanding economy and the growing complexity and sophistication of our financial system. Mm -hmm. Despite all this, the authorized capitalization of the BSP remained at 50 billion, which have taken more than 20 years to be fully subscribed or paid. So if you read the transcript, There's a sense of urgency at the time, 2016. Uh -huh. no? uh, And uh, ngayon ho, well, two, years, po, two years mawawala yung dividendo ho ninyo, uh, two years hindi ho yan pupunta sa capitalization ho uh -huh. ninyo, nasaan na ho yung sense of urgency? Uh -huh. uh, Bali do lahat yung, ano, yung lahat ng arguments na yun, nandun pa rin ho. Um, yung sinahit ko lang, yung sinahit doon kanina na size ng economy, uh, Total resources of the financial system, actually, uh, between 1993 to 2017, lumago ng 14.5 times. Yung kanina hong nasight ko ay uh, yung nominal GDP. So merong mga... But that's not the point. Pangas. The point, uh, Deputy Governor, <clears throat> no 2016, when you were arguing to increase your capitalization to 200 billion, I read it carefully. No? Yes. 
you wanted a strong BSP strong to BSP. adapt to the changing times yes. because the economy has grown. Yeah. Now that uh, we're almost back to normal, mm -hmm. why are you foregoing two um, years of your capitalization, of your dividends that will go to your capitalization? Yung, um, uh, nung time hong yun, meron mga taon na nagkakaroon uh, ng uh, net loss ang BSP. Ngayon ho, mga uh, huling taon, uh, malaki naman ang ating mga uh, Pwede, natin sabi, pwede na ba ang sabihin na hindi nyo na kailangan itaas yung inyong capitalization? Uh, Let's amend the law again and go back. Tanggalin na natin yung uh, 200 kailangan billion. Kailangan pa ho. Kaya nga ho yung ano dito, after two years, babalik ulit uh, 50%. How much is that two years? Yung projection nyo for two years? Ng, uh, okay, dividends. Na nawala. Na nawala. Well, uh, um wala hong, mahirap pong magbigay ng projection, pero ang... Prickly, it's about 20 ko, billion a year? Uh, noong 2020, ang dividends ay 40.5 uh, billion pesos. 2021, 16.35. At 2022, 17.41. On the average, mawawala ka sa inyo mga 20 billion a year. So that's about 40 billion um, in two years. Mga ganun ho, for two years. And then, uh, after that, doon naman papasok ulit yung mga... No, my, my, I, I think I, I, I subscribe to the arguments of Mr. Chikiamko mm -hmm. that uh, the source is problematic because on one hand, you're saying that you need to strengthen the regulator. On the other hand, Hindi nyo ginagawa yun. You're willing to forgo. So, um, how do we now, when you come back here and ask to increase your capital, how do we trust you? Uh, yung um, uh, lahat nung, nung arguments kanina, valid pa rin ho. Kaya, lang, uh, kaya gusto rin ng BSP na may increase ang kanyang kapitalisasyon. Uh, ngayon, ang sinabi ho naman namin kanina, um, yung uh, may mandate na mag-remit ang BSP ng portion ng kanyang dividendo sa national government and yung dividendo yon ay uh, pag-aari ng national government. So, nasa ano ho yun? Nasa uh, ating mga uh, mambabatas Pero kung ganun ho yung argument, ano yung... nasa batas rin ho na dapat yung dividendo ilagay ho sa BSP. It's in the law, you know, provided that the increase in capitalization shall be funded solely from the declared dividends of the Banco Central in favor of the government. For the purpose, any and all declared dividends of the Banco Central in favor of the national government shall be deposited in a special account in general fund and earmarked for the payment of the Banco Central's increase in capitalization. Yes. That is the intention. Ho. Aha. Um, ang assessment ho ngayon kasi nagkaroon na naman ng improvement sa balance sheet. I don't see the improvement. The capitalization is still 60 billion. The target is 200 billion. So where's the improvement well, there? Um, uh, if I can... Sige, yung surplus. Uh, my, my point, uh, um, point not to belabor the, the hearing, um, Mr. Chair, I, we really need to review um, the mandates no? because in the charter, it's very clear that we need to increase the capitalization. And we will all made to understand there's a sense of urgency because we need a strong regulator. But now we're foregoing that. We voted for that bill. Kasama ho kami na bumoto doon. If we vote, to forego the two years in favor of Mahalika, in, 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 in effect, contradicting, contradicting, contradicting our vote during that, those times. That's where I'm coming from. So, not, not to belabor, Mr. <clears throat> Chair, but uh, I just want to stress that point because there's really some uh, problem. I, I think there's some issue in the uh, source of the fund. Yes, uh, thank you, Senator, uh, for that uh, making that uh, very important point. Um, 
Is there any other questions? Uh, Please, uh, so, Chairman, siguro just Debinay. for clarification, mention na little lang ako. Um, Deputy Governor, kailangan niyo pa ho ba yung 200 billion o hindi kailangan na? Kailangan po. So, yun pa rin yung goal niyo yun is to reach goal. that 200 billion. Yes. And what's your plan on how to reach that 20, um, 200 billion? Considering good. na nagkaroon ng Maharlika. Pag, uh, dito ho sa version ng Maharlika ngayon, uh, after the two-year period, uh, uh, yung uh, dividendo na ibibigay ng BSP sa national government, kalahati ho nun ay mapupunta sa, uh, sa BSP ulit at gagawing pang, uh, pag, uh, pagtaas na ng kanyang kapitalisasyon hanggang sa mapuno yung 200 billion. So with this bill, meron na ho ba kayong projection na without Maharlika, ilang years nyo marireach yung 200 billion and uh, with Maharlika, ilang years nyo ngayon marireach yung 200 billion? Well, uh, Your Honor, kasi mahirap po talagang gumawa ng projection ganon sapagkat nagbabago yung takbo ng uh, ekonomiya. Pero yung sinabi ko kanina, yung mga dividendo na historical ng no, uh, Naglalaro sa between 40 hanggang 20 billion uh, siguro, pesos can, can you just make a projection dun sa, based on the previous ano nyo, dividends? Um, Kasi makokompete nyo naman kung ilang years yung mawawala dun sa pag-achieve nyo ng 200 billion because you need to give yung 50% of your dividends to Maharlika Fund. Uh -huh. Di ba? Ang... Um, Ang maaari hong gawin dito kung uh, ibasin na lang namin mag, uh, doon sa historical tapos maggawa kami ng senaryo. Sige po, can you submit that to the Ay, committee? Gawin po namin. O kasi katulad nga nung nerease ni Senator Gatsalan, we passed this bill kasi nga may sense of urgency for you to uh, increase, increase your capitalization. But if we pass yung Maharlika, hindi namin kayo tinutulungan ma-achieve yung goal na yon kasi binawasan namin kayo ng 50% dun sa capitalization nyo. Tama po ba? Ma magkakaroon ng, ano, ng, uh, ng mas mahabang time period bago ma-achieve yung, uh, yung e, 200. Gano'ng kahaba ho ba yung nakikita nyo? Um, mga, mga 14... From our uh, com uh, controller, mga 14 years para mabuo. As opposed to mga, mga kalahati noon. Uh, pero rough pa lang ho yun. Uh, I-re-refine pa namin and, yun. And, and ano ho yung implication nung that seven years na mawawala sa inyo? I'm sure may implication ho yan. <laughs> and what is that? Kasi kailangan ho namin makita yung cost-benefit eh. I mean, uh -huh. diba, if we uh, pass this bill, ano yung mas malaki ba yung benefit for BSP compared to us giving you the 100% dividends for your capitalization? Okay. So, kailangan mo namin ng ganong okay. support. Uh -huh. Siguro we can ask the BSP to submit we'll, uh, uh, paper we'll submit uh, answering that. Just to uh, finish off, uh, I think it's it's important to. We're also as senators, we're also risk averse, uh, and uh, it's important for the DOF to help us uh, minimize or mitigate that risk by understanding fully not only the source of the fund but where the fund will be going. Um, I, I'm sure uh, this was there's some form of uh, uh, investment. Um, uh, strategy that was thought of and where the money will be invested in and what type of returns will be um, will be uh, realized so, so those things should be discussed thoroughly because those are risky parang it's what's happening right now we're we're putting funds but we don't know where it's going parang bahala na where it's going we know it's developmental we know it's uh, some form of return but we don't know what and that's where I think most of us are coming from. No? So uh, we need to uh, understand that fully. And hopefully in the next hearing, Mr. Chair, we can discuss that in greater detail. Uh, yes, Ms. yes, Senator, that is the intention. So um, are, there any more, are there any more questions? 
Uh, so at this point, we'd like to thank all the resource persons for your valuable insights that helped us understand the proposed legislation. Thank you to my colleagues for attending and participating in further improving the proposed measure. And thank you to all the staff present from the OS, from the committees, and from the Secretariat for making this hearing possible. We, uh, we will be announcing our date for our next hearing at some point uh, next week. Uh, the details of the venue and time uh, will follow. If you have further materials or comments that you would like to submit, kindly send them to the, com the committee secretariat. With the approval of my colleagues and in consideration of the time allotted for this hearing, I would like to suspend this hearing. Maraming salamat po.